Celebrating 10 years of award-winning car talk, it's the In Wheel Time Car Show Special. Today, coming to you from the Houston Summer Auto Show at NRG Center in Houston, Texas. Just ahead, we talk to exhibitors, some execs in attendance here at the show. We'll have a couple of new car reviews for you. We'll have the stories making auto news headlines this week. That and more just ahead on today's In Wheel Time Car Show. Howdy along with Mike out of this world Mars down there. King Conrad DeLong right here. Jeffrey Zekin back over here. And let's not forget David mm. Ainsley over here. <laughs> we're so glad that you could join us wherever. Where are, where, uh, where are you coming to? Where am right I? here, right in front of you. I'm looking at this camera here? Yes. Yes, Hi. you are. No, that camera's looking at you. Well, whatever the case may oh, be. Lord. It's good to have you here with us on our very special broadcast today. Because we're special. Well, because uh, this is a Friday and not a Saturday. Typically, we'll be on uh, Saturdays from 8 to 11. But today, because of that lady down there, Rochelle Salinas, <laughs> we wanted to come out wait, here wait. and you give you a little preview of what's to come this weekend. Plus, tomorrow we're going to be at the NHRA Spring Nationals out in Baytown for drag racing if the weather will hold up. So, at any rate, we wanted to uh, come out here Friday thought let's just do a special broadcast sure and we thought well you know people are on facebook and youtube and in wheeltime.com during fridays so why not let it all hang out oh, and give them mm. ch- give them time to come out saturday to the to the houston saturday and sunday saturday figure out what's going sunday. on out yeah. here and they'll know what they're missing so rochelle it's always good to see you matter of fact we were talking before we went on the air the fact that we go nine ten eleven months without seeing each other and it's like you said well, it's like I saw you just yesterday, and that's, that's the way it is. And we, I, we're also talking about the fact of how long uh, we've been partnered in this car thing, and that's 10 years as, all, as well. That's right. So we started when the show started 10 years ago. Time flies. It does. It does. And we're all having a good time. It is. Yeah, it is. So uh, the show here just opened the gates uh, just now, as a matter of fact. We did. We opened at noon right yeah. now. Yep. And so um, if you're watching this on Memorial Day weekend, we're repeating this show. Did you know that? So then you can know what you missed. We, yes. We, oh, yes. Well, wow. And, and yes. get ready for next year because you're going back to January. That's right. We'll hopefully. be in January. So, so everybody will know what, what to yeah. look forward to in January. Make Absolutely. some plans. So let's talk about this show. Very different than in shows past, obviously, because we're having it here at the end of spring, the beginning of summer. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that in itself, plus the whole COVID thing that we've all had to deal with. And that's kind of changed the makeup of this show this year. But, you know, it looks to me as if there are just as many cars as there has been in the past. And I know that's really not the case, but it certainly seems that way. It is pretty similar. And the only other change also is that we planned this in three months instead of six. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Because you all didn't know whether you could have an event three months ago. That's right. And and we went back and forth at quite a roller coaster of the, the rodeo was having their event and then they weren't having their event. So we were able to get back on board and started planning pretty quickly and were able to pull it off. I feel uh, when we opened on Wednesday, I had such nostalgia to see the crowds come in the door at noon and see people walking around and admiring the vehicles and chatting. And it just felt so good to see people in public again and here at the auto show. It just it feels like heartwarming to me. Yeah. Well, and it, it's warmer outside than it typically is in January. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> yeah, and, and we're all dealing with a lot of rain here as we uh, approach Memorial Day weekend. And it, it's just been a real mess as far as the weather is concerned leading up to today. And we understand that there's more rain in the forecast. But we're not going to worry about that. This is an indoor event. That's right. <clears throat> so bring an umbrella to, yeah, bring your umbrella to make it inside because you're going to spend all day here looking at all of the great new vehicles. And uh, speaking of which, there are a lot ju- just within sight of where we are here at the Jeep booth uh, of new vehicles that are here. The Jeep Wrangler 392, the E, the electric Jeep is over here, the Wrangler, and uh, the Grand, uh, Grand, Grand I mean, Wagoneer. Ultimately, as far as car shows go, this is their first uh, trip into the public eye, isn't it? Yeah, this is the first large auto show to take place. Um, Oklahoma City and Tulsa did happen a couple months ago, and Twin Cities is going on right now. But as far as the, our scale of show, this is the largest to start off, and we're excited to be a part of and it. And then it, it has been over a year since It anybody. has, and I know that 
we have multiple vehicles that this is the first to be seen, like the Grand Wagoneer. This is the first right. auto show that it's at, and so it's nice to be able to have that opportunity for people to come see it in person. Yeah, if you've never if you've never heard of it or never seen it before, you need to come here and check it out. What beautiful truck it is! What One of the other things that we were talking about is the fact that uh, you know. It's not all manufacturer displays. There are a lot of dealer displays. You won't know it when you come in and, and see the cars. Right. That get you cars. But uh, there are manufacturers that, because of their own set of rules, couldn't make the show. They, you know, this whole unmasking, if you will, that just taken place here in the past two or three weeks, they didn't have enough time to actually look at their own sets of rules and say, oh, we can do this, 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 this now. Yeah, there's some, we're probably about 50% manufacturer displays, 50% uh, local dealer displays, and we're fortunate to have those relationships with the dealers and for them to see the importance of the auto show, to want to you know, stretch their inventory and their staff to be able to be here and display at the auto show because it's really important to have all the brands represented because when you come, you want to make sure that you're comparison shopping with all the brands that are available, and we were able to pull that off, thankfully. Well, I mean, the umbrella organization of the Houston Auto Show is the Houston Auto Dealers Association. Right. And uh, I have been uh, doing news stories for months now about the chip shortage that is causing, uh, actually, assembly plants to shut down. Right. Either uh, indefinitely or for two or three weeks at a time. Some of them are just lowering the number of shifts that they have, uh, and they're just not turning out the cars that people are demanding because car sales are through the roof. And that in turn causes all of these vacant new car lots is, is that people are driving around the city and seeing how many of these new car dealers are short of inventory. Yes, it is an issue that everyone is dealing with, but you know they're, they're working with what they can. They're definitely promoting the pre-owned option right now too and the customization and getting your vehicle ordered instead. And I think that's kind of a benefit. You know, people are becoming more patient having been through this last year of learning about change and patience. And when you can go ahead and customize your vehicle and get exactly what you want, but know you have to wait for it, it's a pretty nice option. Well, and one of the things that happens at the manufacturer's level is ordered cars, confirmed ordered cars take priority over base inventory cars right. for the dealership. So yeah, if, that there's sold, sold. Right. Yeah. if there's a sold order on the on the guide, they're going to pick that up before they just pick up base inventory for the exactly. dealer. So. Were you, were, you, were you shoveling off a little gnat there? Is yes, that what there, that was? there are some gnats in the building. The rodeo has been doing some activations around, oh. and the building hasn't been used as frequently as it usually is. So right, that's <laughs> true. It's, some it's, true. it's a fumigation thing. <laughs> How long did it take to set all this up? When did you start moving in? Uh, we moved in last Friday. We started moving in things. Camp Jeep uh, and the Ram Track were the first to move in. I'm so glad that they're back. You know, we didn't know what COVID protocols were going to allow for them to activate, but thankfully we have Camp Jeep and the Ram Track. Um, and so they, they started moving in first, and then we were ready by Wednesday morning. Well, it, it, it's truly amazing that you got it done that quickly. It, it, you know, to think of the breadth, the scope of all of this, it's so huge. The, and there's so many vehicles and, and parts. The, the other new thing that we moved in this year that took some time and planning that we hadn't had before is we have a whole section of boats and RVs. And that was the first time we moved them in. And because of the logistics in the back of coming up a ramp, the RVs couldn't actually go up those ramps. Oh. And they're at the opposite end of the building. So we had to drive them across the, the complete the show floor. So oh, they wow. had to come in first, too. <laughs> how funny. I didn't have any clue they couldn't come up the I ramp. Would, I wouldn't have that. How sharp yeah, the, the, ramp the stabilizers are, are too long. That would be first <laughs> in, last out. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> so they have to be patient. Right. Yeah. But it's great to have those additions to the to the show this year and well, plan your full something summer. Something new. I mean, Houston Auto Show is always doing something new. So bringing the uh, the motorhomes and stuff here. But the newest thing, and it's not new. How how many years you've been doing Camp Jeep? We've had Camp Jeep at least the last six years. Is it six yeah. years? That is such a great thing to come visit. So if you're coming to the show, you got to go take a tour in these Jeeps, and they're going to put you behind. Behind, well, in the truck. In the vehicle. And with somebody's going to drive up a hill so mm -hmm. steep, all you're doing is staring at the ceiling. Conrad, that is actually behind us, and I can see there's a line already to get in it. And we've <laughs> been open five minutes. Uh, nine minutes. People run to get yeah, first to in get line. Yeah, to get in line, yeah. Mm -hmm. How much are tickets to get in? $12. 12 bucks. Wow. Under two years old or free. Every other ticket you know, is $12. The, the last time that we talked to you, 
tickets were only going to be sold online. Yes. Well, that's changed. That has. In COVID's changing times, every day is different. Uh, we were able to open up box offices here on site. So you can buy from a ticket window your ticket, or we also have QR codes throughout the lobby. If you want to use your phone and continue socially distance, you're welcome to, to buy the $12 ticket without any Ticketmaster fees via QR code. Too. And, by the way, and by the way, speaking of uh, COVID, uh, I had both of my shots. Me too. Yeah. And so how are you handling that with masks here? Well, it's definitely by the honor system, and masks are recommended. I have been telling people to bring a mask no matter what, because depending on your comfort level, when the crowd grows, you may want to put it on. And when you're doing a test drive or our simulator experience in the Ford display, you are going to need to wear a mask. And obviously talking to a product specialist, it's kind of a respectful thing to do yep. today. Um, but it's not required to wear a mask at the auto show. Yay! <laughs> you mentioned you mentioned tickets. Are there are there discounts for seniors or military or pub, yeah, yeah, twelve service? bucks? Yeah, we don't have okay. any discounts Just this year. Sure. Yeah, um, you, you can there. stop by a local dealership. They do have some complimentary tickets right. for for guests, and so you could stop by a local dealership and see if they have any of those tickets Wanna left. Get it out there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Twelve dollars is cheap. I mean, exactly it is. right. It, it's a very affordable event. I mean, it's cheaper than going to a movie these days. Yeah, and they're not <laughs> even open. And you're going to spend longer than an hour and a half That's here. Right. <laughs> you know, if you a family of five, two adults, and three kids, you know, you're talking twenty five bucks, mm -hmm. and, and you've and got I, the day. I smell, right. I smell some aromas of popcorn and things in the air already this morning. Yeah, this we've afternoon. got full concessions, food trucks out front too to add to the variety, and you know, lots to lots of things to do here at the auto show. The Subarus having pet adoptions. Oh, really? So if you're well, that's trying to their, get a puppy. That's their kind of home base of uh, um, community marketing is through, is through the ASPCA. And yeah, they've local with, they've they've partnered with some local nonprofits for pet adoption. And Don was week. looking for a tiger. He wanted to adopt a tiger. <laughs> oh, I think they captured that one already. They're oh, off the okay. market. I got you. <laughs> you know, leave it to you to come up with something like that. Here I am. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I was uh, getting into snake handling, but I decided, uh, well, We'll just move on to something else. <laughs> Please do. Uh, so what cars will we not see here? Unfortunately, um, Infiniti is not here. Oh, no. Audi is not here. Uh, is that because of their national restrictions on travel and things? Yes. M most of those. Uh, Hyundai, as a brand, is not here. We do have a couple vehicles here from a dealer display, um, but their full selection is not here. And, uh, but that's again, that's that's a corporate decision it is, right. for it's traveling. Right. A lot of it is still on the corporate policies that they have enacted still for no travel or no indoor events and in-person events um, due to COVID. But you get enough support from the local dealers that they're going to loan you the inventory they have. That's right. To and put so on display. We have Mazda, Nissan, Cadillac, VW, all represented by our local dealers, and we're really lucky to have that. Well, well I'm a Cadillac you. guy. I'm going to find them here in a little bit. Yeah, they just brought in a new. Escalade. It's mine. Uh, yeah, it's it delivery. Is incredible. <laughs> delivery. <laughs> Let me ask you, where are all the keys for these vehicles? I just want to know. I just, can't tell you oh that. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> They're under lock and key. Lock and key. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, uh, it's uh, the only reason that I bring that up is because I'd hate for somebody to come out here saying, oh, well, I want to see the full line of Hyundais. I, I don't really know exactly which one I want and be disappointed or somebody come and say, oh, well, gee, I came out here to see that and it's not here. So uh, if you had a question on whether the vehicle that you particularly wanted to come out here and see is not here, how would you know that? You can check on our website, what brands are represented on HoustonAutoShow.com. You can message us on social media, and I've been replying to emails at info at HoustonAutoShow.com. Many people have messaged, hey, is the Bronco there? Can I actually sit in it? Is this model here, that model there? And I'll go check the show floor and, is and the make sure the Bronco here? The Bronco <laughs> is here. I mean, that's all I ever get. Hey, when, when's the Bronco coming out? It's not coming out for a while. And you can sit in it. And there's a display in the lobby where you can sit in it. You can see how the roof retracts. You can see how to take oh, really? on and off the doors. Pretty it's a neat. full interactive experience for you to make sure that the Ford Bronco is your, that you may be pre-ordered and haven't even seen it yet. You can come check it out. Cool. Who's, who's that guy there? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> we, we know him from somewhere. He, he obviously just got out of jail. Yeah. <laughs> COVID jail. COVID, COVID jail. jail. That, that's, that's right. So if you were to come here, as a, as a newbie, not part of the show, just as mom. Yeah. Uh, uh, what would interest you the most? 
when I, especially if you're car shopping, right? If you're comparison, trying to figure out what you want in the market today without having to travel all over Houston to each dealership, I love being able to get in and see and t sit in the vehicles and make sure my whole family is going to fit comfortably. I am the mom who lets the husband drive, the friends sit up front, and then I got to be all the way in the third row with the two hooligans back there. <laughs> and I need to make sure that I have space to sit and either divide them, I have leg room, and that's what you can do here at the plus, auto show. Plus make sure you can reach them when you need <laughs> to be able to reach around. them. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Don and Jeff are in the back with you. Yeah, huh? and, and we're, <laughs> but, but we're in an Escalade. <laughs> right. So that I think that's the best part. And my kids love being able to sit in the driver's seat of the vehicle, participate in the Camp Jeep and interactive exhibits. Uh, and, you know, to have all of that just at your fingertips and talking to product specialists makes it a really fun event. In one place. In one as place. As opposed to having roof. to drive from dealer to dealer to dealer to dealer. Right. You know, you bring it all under one roof. And I think that's important that you're talking to a product specialist, not necessarily a salesperson. Correct. A product specialist. That'll answer your questions, tell you features, tell you all kinds of things, but won't really sell you a car. Yeah, they're not going to pressure you on financing today or anything. That's right. it's, it's just about educating you on the vehicle so that you can make the best buying decision. And well, in some instances, great. those product specialists are a little more knowledgeable than some of the salespeople that are out there. So Sometimes. Because they go they through are a lot talking, of training before yes. they get here. And they're talking about these vehicles at auto shows around the country. Right, right. So they get a lot of practice at yeah. it, specifically focused on that one, not not on 15 or 20 models that are out on the, exactly. the dealership floor, but that particular vehicle is theirs. So true. So we've got uh, today, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm -hmm. What are the hours? We're today till 930 at night. Tomorrow we open at 10 till 930 at night, 10, 10 a.m. to 930, and then Sunday 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Oh, wow. Those, those are long hours. You yeah, know, so plenty of time to come. Yeah. What car dealership have you ever been passed on a Sunday and somebody's got their car that they, dri uh, they drove there and it's got it parked up there next to the <laughs> gate. The yeah. Mom and dad <laughs> yeah. and the kids are out there looking at the cars and the dealership's closed. Yeah, the, we do have the, the weekend law in Texas, so you can only be open one day of the weekend. So don't worry about that. We're open all weekend long here right. at the auto show. And, and, and the uh, reason uh, they do that is they don't want to be bothered by a salesperson. So exactly. come to the Houston Auto Show and enjoy it. Well, th that's part of it. But the other thing is is the, the time that they have. I mean, you know, the way families are, at least the way mine was when I had the girls and growing up, Saturday was jam-packed with events baseball, soccer, whatever it was. Yeah, and Sunday true. was yep. really the only time that we had for family mm -hmm. at, on a typical weekend, you know. And so there is that. And I think that that's a, a huge selling point to come to uh, the Houston Auto Show. Every car manufacturer, for the most part, is here one way or another. And um, Sunday is a, is a great family day. And why not come to the car show? And if you want to see some of the Highline cars, they're here. You said Aston Martin was here? Yeah, Aston Martin is here from Star Motor Cars. We've got um, Indigo and uh, the Indigo Group and Post Oak Motors is also here with all your high-end Bentley, Rolls-Royce, McLaren, Lamborghini. My kids love to go drool at those. They don't get to see them <laughs> often on the roadway. We you know, love so. to drool at them, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's really fun to be able to go check those out, too. Well, what? How, it's always fun. Well, Certainly for me, but I think for most people to go and look at the new cars. Of course. Uh, even if, if you're in the market for a new car or not, you know, let's go see what, you know, Mrs. Smith down the street is driving in that brand new, what looks like a million dollar car. Let's go see how much that thing really costs. <laughs> and let's go look at the inside of it because you're too proud to go down there and knock on the door. Hey, man, I like your car. Mm -hmm. You know, there's that. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm one of those kind of weirdo kind of guys that you'd you know, go down and yeah, knock, down on, the and knock on the door. <laughs> yeah. I would. Yeah, but even if you're a technology person, you know, there's so much technology in these vehicles. That, Don't get me know, started on that. I've got a review that I'm going to do of a BMW that I drove a couple oh, of weeks I've, ago. Yeah, I was in that car. Um, you know, I have my youngest daughter is an astrophysicist, and she's very smart and very very knowledgeable Analytical. about all of the high tech stuff and. She can zip through all the computers in these cars and da-da-da-da-da-da. So she was here a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I had the fortune of driving a new BMW M5 competition. Nice car. Very nice car. Hot rod. Very fast, 600 horsepower. But this thing has an infotainment system in it that, for me, 
I am not very high tech about it. And she's zipping through all of the menus and stuff. She says, Dad, it's kind of overkill, isn't it? <laughs> it's so, too much. And, and there are some cars, and this one in particular, in my opinion, it's overkill. Unless you were an absolute tech geek. geek. Yeah, but you Don. would never drill down into any of these other menus because you can control almost every facet of the car, from the engine to the transmission to the suspension to the lighting to the to the sound system. You'd have to be really into that car to understand all of yeah. it. But, Don, your Betamax clock still flashes 12. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was the dummy that bought the Betamax machine instead of the VHS. And paid a whopping amount and only used the playback and record functions but on it. But that M5 was stunningly it beautiful. Was. That was a good-looking car. Yeah. Well, it was at $136,000, I believe. And if people are waiting me. in line to buy it. Oh, yeah. Out they build very yeah, many it, of them. It was, uh, it was pretty incredible. But the safety tech features are, have been really impressive, too, and I think they've come a long way. I was We have a Kia Telluride as one of our company vehicles. Yes, very and nice. Those man, are cool. the blind spot camera on that is really impressive because no matter what, what they've made the mirrors bigger on the vehicle and added a little light that shows someone's in the blind spot but right. now you turn on your blinker and then the heads up there's the camera showing the blind spot wow i mean that's really smart technology to keep people safe on the roadway well you know they've been uh, working with the government to try to do away with the real rear side view mirrors that are on and there put cameras and up put in cameras place. on them because it's much more aerodynamic and much more efficient, especially if you're on the highway. I didn't think about that. That's very true. Yeah. And, and you and can see you so much better. Yeah, but, but I know what will happen then. They'll just squeeze in one more lane of traffic, too, because then we can narrow yeah, the lanes. Yeah, because the cars are narrower. <laughs> the cars are narrower. Well, they're already designed. The coefficient on the airflow is already designed for the mirror. And then plus they're folding mirrors when you park. I have that. So getting rid of the mirrors is really no big deal to me. Do I need to turn around here no, and no, look you, at you while you speak? We need to move Jeff down here. We need to move Jeff down here. You know, I down here. We should have worn, we, we should, I guess, bring our gray shirts so we all look like we're. The bowling no, team. The bowling <laughs> team. <laughs> totally. Hi, right, we're the Houston Auto Show bowling team. <laughs> our handicap is personal. <laughs> I thought it was me. <laughs> oh, my, my goodness. We've lost control. Yeah, we, we are well, out of but, control. But you're right about how the advancement of the safety systems now in a lot of vehicles are just standard equipment. It you is. know, when I was working for Oldsmobile back in the 80s, ooh, the big thing was anti-lock brakes, and then the big thing was airbags. You don't even think about those anymore because everything has anti-lock brakes and airbags. That was the 1880s. Yes, my, it was. My 1980 Oldsmobile was my first car, and it spoke to me it was the first car to speak to you and it would tell me fasten your seatbelt and you click and it said thank oh, wow. you <laughs> tell you your oh. door is ajar we thought it was the most high-tech thing was it a system. cutlass no it was a uh a chiva it must have been a upper end model oh come on it's, tornado no 98 442 oh my gosh it's still i'm drawing a blank Right. No, normally, I just called it the Cucaracha. Oh. But <laughs> <laughs> really? Why did you call it, it the Cucaracha? Because the way that it's, it would speak to you, um, my my dad's sales or uh, landscape team, that my dad's a <laughs> landscaper, they said it seems like you would honk the horn and it would play La Cucaracha. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that's just what we called it. Really? How fun. What color yeah. was it? Blue. Um. Blue. The blue. I wrecked it on the. Gotcha. I wrecked it on the first day, pulling oh. out of a driveway, and the only thing that happened to it was the clips on the front bumper slid. One slid sideways, and that was it. The lady I hit, unfortunately, did messed it, up. Did it, her car. Messed up big time. Did it say "ouch" when you hit it? <laughs> it, did. Yes, it, it said, Ouch. It said "call your mom." Call your mom. <laughs> yeah. At least it didn't call her for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, in today's cars, would they call would that? Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. They're watching you. Yeah, they're calling. That's what's hey, so fascinating. Guess what Rochelle just did? Yes, <laughs> and, the, and seriously, with the teenage monitoring of driving in in the systems today, that's they they have that. <laughs> well, and I'm not I'm surprised that with how camera forward all these vehicles are today, that at the moment of impact that they don't capture the last 10, 15 seconds of every camera on the car. That's not out there. You know, now if you want 
video of your driving, you have to put your phone up or buy a camera to do that. And save it on a, on a chip and, or something. And save it yeah. somewhere else. But the, the cameras that are on cars today are very high tech, right. very good definition, a lot of uh, high quality a stuff. A lot of high I'm quality I'm sure an cameras. engineer somewhere is thinking about yeah. that. Well, and I'm betting there's a lawyer somewhere thinking about it, too. <laughs> we don't want to get into yeah, that liability Yeah, there's a lot game. of lawyers thinking about it. You know? That's the problem with autonomous driving. If, if, yeah. If liability. You, if you look at the cost of a car, and this was back, you know, 15 years ago, it was about $1,800 a car was just put away for litigious uh, legal costs that may occur at some point in the future. And then there's all these knuckleheads with the AI that are trying to defeat the system and they're getting caught or getting hurt. By the way, are you staying with us? Sure. Are you? I'll hang around. I'll hover. Okay. Well, uh, I know you're speaking to a few of my colleagues around. Okay. Well, I, I don't have that. I don't have the schedule, so. Oh, well, you're going to have, you've got fun stuff coming from classic cars. We've got the, you know, buzz the, from Evolve Houston. Well, and that buzz yeah. stops over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk to Buzz all the time. He's a yeah, he's, he's great. A, he's, he's a, a good guy. Okay. And then we've got a few aftermarket displays this year and, and one very unique one called uh, Nothing in One that protects your vehicle in many ways, one being flooding. So oh, I think people yeah. will be interested to hear looking, about their technology. Looking forward to hearing what, how that works. Yeah. In my mind, I'm kind of trying to figure it out. Saran uh, wrap. <laughs> kind of like an, an inflatable saran wrap. cocoon. Lobotomy. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen that. Is that what it is? The inflatable well, thing? Well, we'll have to wait till the guy gets yeah. in. All right. Ask well, I'm just trying I mean, to get a little We don't want to steal his thunder. Tease so people stay tuned in. Isn't that yeah. part of uh, or, radio marketing? Come, or, <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't know anything <laughs> about that. Would come, I? come to the auto show and see him in person. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can point and make fun of me. We do. All I, the time. All the time, I know. Okay, you're yeah. on. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, so Rochelle Salinas, uh, Houston Automobile Dealers Association and uh, Houston Auto Show with us. And uh, we thank you for joining us today. If you'd like to get in touch with us anytime, you can always shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime.com. We've got more from the Houston Auto Show, the summer Houston Auto Show, right after a quick break. Stay with us. Winning the highest sales satisfaction award among all luxury brands from J.D. Power in 2020 tells you everything you need to know about your Lincoln purchase from Bayway. Bayway Lincoln is where a premium buying experience is a priority, and you're invited to feel it yourself. This Houstonian-owned premier dealership is managed by Lincoln Stahl, a seasoned member of the Bayway family. If it's online, in person, or in your own driveway, Bayway gets you to the luxury level you deserve. Bayway Lincoln is on the Gulf Freeway at Fuquay, just inside Beltway 8. Visit baywaylincoln.com today. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise-in, and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, June 19th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free, and everyone is invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event at the Lupe Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard just south of I-10 in Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Lupe founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in, Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, June 19th, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Lupe's in Katy. The In Wheel Time Car Show will be there, too. Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday morning, June 19th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Lupe's in Katy. Inside the Loop, visit Tailpipes and Tacos on the Southwest Freeway at Shepherd, weather permitting. NHRA Camping World Drag Racing. It's an 11,000 horsepower Nitro Rodeo coming to Houston Raceway Park in Baytown. Catch all the Nitro and Pro Stock action at the Mopar Express Lane. NHRA Spring Nationals presented by Pennzoil this weekend. Matt Hagen, Leah Pruitt, Erica Enders, three-time world champ Steve Thorne, and 16-time himself John Force. Kids 12 and under are free in general admission. Get tickets at HoustonRaceway.com. Houston's got Horsepower. Don't miss the first ever Houston Summer Auto Show. May 19th through the 23rd at NRG Center. A limited edition collection of your favorite brands and models, including the new Ford Bronco and Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Tickets online only at HoustonAutoShow.com. Celebrating 10 years of award winning car talk, it's the In Wheel Time Car Show Extra. Your weekly go-to all things automotive place. Today, coming to you from the Houston Summer Auto Show at NRG Center. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. He's off gallivanting around somewhere. King Conrad DeLong. We've got Jeff Zekin over here. 
and David mm. Ainsley, uh, Mr. Transmitter himself, <laughs> is here. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad that you could join us on this uh, wonderful Friday afternoon here in Houston, Texas. We're a special broadcast, and we thank you for being with us today. Um, this broadcast is also going to repeat itself on uh, Memorial Day weekend, a week from tomorrow. So we get off? No, you have did, to you show didn't, up. You didn't no. know that, did you? No, no you, I didn't. You yeah. show up and we'll be gone. Well, I'd like to get off. Would you? I bet you would. The, you know, we got this is great. This is this is a, an amazing event. This is really cool. Well, it's nice to have a big I, is event. Is this your to first event to. here with y'all? Really? Is this your yeah. first time coming to the show? No, no, I've been to the to the auto show. No, but with us? Yes, with you. Yeah, oh. absolutely. That's right. We it's, didn't do last year because, my, of, there were, right. because of COVID. COVID right. Yeah. And it's, right. It's my initial uh, initiation. Mm-hmm. So we need to haze them. <laughs> oh, so, you yeah. did that setting this up. Well, you're going to have to do like Don did the first time he came, and you have to run from one end to the other buck naked. Twice. <laughs> well, you weren't here earlier. Really? That's, that's what that's, that's Don's already volunteering. <laughs> Can I do it again? <laughs> me, me, me. <laughs> No, but this is uh, this is very very cool. Well, I'm so glad that they have it and it's open and people are showing up and walking around and looking. It's nice to have events back. Yeah, yeah. we told we told we told Rochelle she's going to stay here. No, she's not. So Ben Miller is <laughs> on his way here. Uh, he is with the classic car display, which I haven't even been out in the in the four year. Yeah, we haven't done anything. Uh, uh-uh, but he's on his way here to tell us what's out there. So. Uh, well, well we've had Ben on last couple of years because he's always got a great collection of cars that he brings. I know. From and, the connections and, and he and has. I know. Wish I had his connections. Holy why moly. Don't, we don't, I don't know why we don't have him on or his connections on during the year. We always say we're going to, and then we forget. Well, well I'll tell you Mars, what. He's the scheduler. Well, when he gets here, let's set it up. Without Mars, because Mars isn't yeah. here right now. Well, he really doesn't know what's going on. He, he's and out. so we're talking <laughs> behind his doesn't. back. doesn't. He's out well, there's up. that, too. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, so we are in the Jeep display. Very cool. Uh, thank you, Jeep, for putting up with our shenanigans here. Uh, right behind us is the brand-new Jeep Wrangler E. Mm-hmm. The electric one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I think it's uh, a 4E. Whatever. Yep. It, well, and then in front of us is the Grand Cherokee L. And then there is the... Grand Wagoneer. Grand Wagoneer. I'm sorry. Grand Wagoneer. Yes. That's too big. And the for Grand me. Cherokee L. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the long wheelbase. That's Grand too Cherokee. big for me. Yeah. Very nice. Well, and, and this is the first display of those vehicles in, in the industry. The first public display of those right. vehicles. So, so that's pretty cool. This should be your first stop, I would think, because uh, these are brand new, for the first time seen in public uh, displays. What do you, what, what? As well as the first time the 392 Jeep has is, is been on public display, too. Yeah. Uh, and right here in front of us, in this section, uh, is the Ram display. And I have to tell you, I w- uh, David was actually, what, what, are you, what are we doing? I'm not real sure. I think he's going to turn the camera. He's going to mess it up because he's going to get the, oh, it turned off. All right, well, let's. What, uh, Jeffrey, let's get another camera turned to, towards us, and we'll figure it out. Yeah, just, yeah. There. Look at that. How's that? Well, we're not sure how well it's going to look, but yeah. we'll, we'll figure it but out. But at any rate, uh, so the RAM display is here. Right before the show, David and I were walking around in this this area, and um, there's the Cummins diesel. Oh, and, and the Cummins and diesel is a beast. It is. You know, it's over 1,000 foot-pounds of torque. Right. And then uh, there is the high-end uh, Ram pickup truck. The T-Rex. Well, that's, that's the race truck. That's on display here, as well as the high-end Ram, the, the one that has the etched stuff in the leather and the wooden dashboard. and um, what it's, What's not the Longhorn? What is Laramie. That? No, what is that, what is that, that big high-end uh, Ram truck down there, Mike? The Longhorn. 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 That's yeah. a Texas thing. Well, whatever the case may be, it uh, it re- really is nice. It's like jaw-dropping well, interior. And when you look at how they sell trucks, you know, everybody sells what I call the white fleet. 
you know, it's the white truck. It does its job. It probably doesn't even have carpet in it. And then, you know, then they have the next level up that's got a little nicer interior with some carpet in. Then they'll give you another level up with maybe some leather and a little nicer interior. And then they all have that Taj Mahal vehicle. Yeah. And this one, the Laramie Longhorn, is their Taj Mahal vehicle. You know, I appreciate leather seating. I do. I appreciate it. It's very beautiful. It's very nice. But you know what? The cloth interiors have come a long way, baby. And yeah. they are really, really nice. Because the cloth interiors include usually vinyl on the side bolsters mm -hmm. and the bottom bolsters. That's because the, the slide in and out. And then the cloth in the middle and the materials that they use these days, that, that's my cup of tea. Well, they, they've learned over time that that material has to not only be beautiful, but it also has to be very durable. Um, and, and they've continued to make that adjustment as well is to is to really if I, dress up the cloth. If I ever decided that I wanted some different seats in my Corvette that they all have leather, that's what I would do. I'd do the leather bolsters, but I would have cloth inserts. inserts. Yep. I know, you know, different cars, you know, at the performance level of cars, they'll do the leather bolsters and then do a suede insert because the suede kind of holds on to you yeah, a little bit. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't need the suede. Well, you're, you're, you're not a leather interior guy. I'm not. the heat of the summer, the leather interior it, can get it, a little warm. It doesn't warm. let your skin breathe. Mm -hmm. let, and, of course, then you got the, the perforated leather that's, you know, got the vacuum cleaner on it or whatever it is that blows cool Cold air, air up your you. butt. Yep. Yeah. Well, it does. I mean, uh, just to put it bluntly. But it works. It works it, great. It keeps you cool. Yeah. Do they, do, they, do they put cool coolness in cloth seats? I don't um, think so. Probably not because generally the cloth seats are a, 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 a lower um, content level vehicle. So I don't know that I, – I don't know that – I couldn't tell you what cloth seat has – cooled seats i think all the cl all the cooled seats are with the leather perforated leather yeah well maybe i just caught on to something there right. that maybe you know you know when you when you know you, how they do that when you right? go to the they, they take some ducting from the air conditioning system <laughs> and they run it under the carpet through the floor like almost like a vacuum cleaner hose in reverse and then blow that up to a manifold that sits under the seat and blows that cold air on you you know, it, it's quite simple in in function, and some of them actually have some fans that are a little bit closer to create a little bit more airflow. It's, it's kind of simple as function, but it took them forever to figure that out. They've had air conditioning since the 50s, and they didn't really go to uh, corporate yep. seats until mid-2000s, 2010 maybe. Might have been some of the first ones out there. Uh, uh, yeah, dumb. But uh, I'm thinking, you know, I sure would like to do the uh, – I sure would like to do the air-conditioned cloth seats. You go to the furniture store, you, and you, you're really not into leather, and you want to buy a really nice sofa or love seat. You're going to look at the material that's on there. You're going to see how comfortable it is. Why not? Why not? Why don't they treat it the same way in a car? I mean, you know, why can't you have a high-end cloth? And these, some of these trucks do. Well, I'd agree with you because I don't have leather furniture at the house. All my furniture at the house is cloth. Yeah. I, um, I mean, I... It's again, all red velour. It is not. <laughs> and with the black drapes. And you serve nothing but steaks That's right. at night. That's right. Uh-huh. And, 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 and wood you, paneling I was just going to say, you got a humidor in the back <laughs> for your cigars. <laughs> God. We've kind of got. Am I a Del Frisco again? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I was thinking more along the lines of steak and ale, but they did have a good salad bar there. Oh, gosh. Steak and ale. I haven't been this. They're, they're they've not been even out of business, business anymore. Last one I knew steak and ale was in Conroe. There was a steak and ale in Conroe, just north of 105 on the east Somebody side. Somebody just wouldn't give up, huh? Probably. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what happened to Ben Miller. He clearly doesn't have a watch. <laughs> We're back up and running on that. Are we back up and running now? What what was all of the, the stuff the, that was, was going all on? The hub, uh, minor, hub. minor technicality. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I know I wouldn't understand. The, the twelve is still flashing on his Betamax. <laughs> <laughs> it is. 
It was 12, wasn't it? Katie, Katie, help me. Help every, Katie. every time there's a blackout, Katie, he has to wait till Katie shows up <laughs> pretty much <laughs> to reset all his clocks. On the, on the microwave. Well, I don't know oven. if she's watching in Denver or not, but if she is, honey, by the way, you're coming here to help me set up my Please. Hulu, my Roku, my Fire Stick, whatever it is. Please come Because I need them. to wean myself off of Comcast Xfinity. Please help me. Oh, well. They've shot my rate up again. Oh, it's dumb. Oh, my, I, I don't watch any of that stuff. Well, for me, I have Comcast because I want Discovery. I want Motor Trend. I want the History Channel. All I yeah. want is Motor my Trend. Motor Trend, yeah. my Netflix, well, and, I think and some, me TV. I think some of that you can get with, um, like, uh, the Discovery app. Uh, you can watch Motor Trend, Discovery, History Channel. Or well, maybe I'll have to get app. that. that You're going to pay for it. It's like four ninety nine dollars a month. Yeah, you're gonna pay bad. for you're gonna pay for everything. Yep, you do. And we're paying right now, we as are. a matter of fact, because our conversation has gone way off track. Uh, it has. Where's Ben? Howdy. Where's Ben? Ben's coming through the front door as we speak. He is through not. The front door. That's what he said. Did he? <laughs> Does he realize that he's ten minutes late? Well, I didn't ask him. I'll ask him when he gets here. No, I will. There you go. Oh, great. <laughs> Bash him over the head with that. Invite a guest on and beat him up. Yeah. That's it. Berate him. Well, I, somebody must have said something. Oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm late. Probably got caught up in conversation. You know, there's a lot of people here. Yeah, there are. Um, He's probably buying you breakfast. That's why it's taking Yeah, that's probably what it is, yeah, from one of the uh, food trucks. There you out, go. Out, out, out so are we expecting a Jeep guy next? Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, we actually, uh, Benny's going to join us at the top of the hour. Who is? Benny. <laughs> Benny? Benny? Benny from Camp Jeep. Benny Munguia. Did I say that but were you were you here two Mungia? Yeah. You yeah, were yeah, here remember. two years ago. I remember your last name. You look tall. Yeah. yeah. You remember me? Yeah. Sorry. I, I, I was just gonna say it's probably a bad dream that you're still having yeah. from that. Yeah. Right now. It took a, it took two years to get over it. You know, with a little therapy though. It works. Yeah. Yeah. So we want you to I want you to hang tight. You, hey, look at this. I got my Jeep shirt on too, huh? Yeah. Look at me. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to say that. But you, you, you slept in yours. I did not sleep in mine, <laughs> and I did wash it, so I'm just saying. Three weeks ago. Stop. <laughs> it's not true. Um, so this is kind of, you know, uh, and the other thing is it says FCA over there. They clearly haven't gotten the memo that they're owned by somebody. Stellantis. The Stellantis. Stellantis. Well, you know, it's old signage. Well, yeah. It's COVID times, right? Well, it, it How did is. How they buy them during COVID? How do you negotiate that when you can't be in the same room with people? I don't know. I, I think at that level, it's just lawyers doing all the work. Oh, and I guess who cares if all the lawyers <laughs> exactly. get COVID, right? I mean, there, there, there's plenty of them to go you around. Know, you know, the old joke of uh, what do you call uh, 10 lawyers at the bottom of the ocean? A, A good, good start. start. Yeah. <laughs> um, Send your comments to info at inwheeltime.com. Ben, sit, would you please sit down? Please sit down. Put put a headset on, because because you know, you we can have a much because, better. You have to because sit of the at, camera, you have to sit at the head of the table. That's right. You don't mind, do you? No. Good, good, good. Pull that. There you go. There you go. So um, he's done this. Before. Do you? Are are you doing Camp Jeep? I'm doing Camp Jeep. Yes. So you don't really know anything about the new Grand Wagoneer. Uh, it's minimal right now for me. Yeah. <laughs> have you been in it? Uh, actually, I haven't yet. No? I mean, this is actually the first time I've seen it. Well, I know, well everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, This we, is the we, first we, time it's been on public display. Yeah. yeah. You don't actually you can have bend, to. You can bend that in. If there, you want. That's fine. You're fine. You're yeah, fine. You're you good, don't have good. to hold it. Good. It's good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, um, yeah, I didn't know how much you knew about these. So you know everything that there is to know about other Jeeps. Oh, yes. Mainly the Wrangler. I mean, Wrangler, Grand Cherokees, Cherokees. Are you putting those on the uh, on the treadmill over here? Yeah, sure are. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, right now we actually have uh, the 392, the V8. Oh, the yeah? Wrangler. That's a bad boy right there. Well, I there. bet you can catch air on that. Oh, uh, it's it's scary. <laughs> awesome. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, um, you don't catch air in here. <laughs> but uh, I would imagine that if you really wanted to, you probably could somewhere. I don't know as if I'd want to. Get a, a Jeep get Wrangler caught. Airborne or get <laughs> caught. That's Yeah, that's it. You know, my so, mind used to think that way, but it doesn't anymore. Well, we noticed as the gate opened up, people running to Camp Jeep because they wanted to be early in line to get the, uh, to get the tour uh, around 
uh, the drive, the drive, ride and drive. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and they run to it, and it's uh, mostly a, all the cities. So what to. what have you been doing during okay. COVID? Because there's been not been any car shows. Yeah, I mean we do little projects here and there, but been home fishing. <laughs> Working out. So do you <laughs> make adjustments to the ride course at Camp Jeep for each location? Uh, they're usually about the same. They do try to tweak them here and there just to give it a different look. Uh, obviously, Houston's one of the big shows that we do, and the first time we do it this year. So we're real happy to be back yeah. um, and happy to be here in Houston again. And you guys are following COVID protocols. You're doing some disinfecting, yep. making sure there's some social distancing. Yeah, how does that gotta, work? Yeah. So every lap that we do, uh, we don't have anybody in the front seat, so uh, two or three people in the back or whoever could be one. They'll take a lap around, and each lap they'll go in a little station, and they'll clean it and disinfect everything, right. every single lap. They Are you it. serious? Yep. Oh, my God, yes, what a pain in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. And, dude, I, I can only imagine that we're talking about Dish paying hands at the end of the day with yeah. the cleaning solution. Yeah. You got to wear gloves. But that's what makes it safe for people to come out and take the take the ride. You know, it's I know. it's a matter of serving the, the no, I get it. customers. No, I get it. So. Yeah. Well, uh, so where do you go from here? Uh, from here, I'll I'll go back home where I live in South Padre Island. Uh, no, it I must was be ask rough. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He lives on South Padre Island. Uh huh. So when he's fishing, are you are you surf casting or are you going out? Uh, so it depends. Sometimes I kind of mix it all up. So <laughs> I got to keep myself busy. <laughs> surf casting. <laughs> yeah. Fishing yeah. in the surf. You, you yeah. walk yeah. out yeah. and you yeah. – yeah, yeah. But down yeah. there, I mean, when, y'all, when you go out fishing, you go out five miles and you're looking for marlin. Yeah. Down here, we got to go out 50. <laughs> yeah. There is, for, a, uh, there is a frozen food section where I shop. So <laughs> <laughs> that, That's right. Well, yeah, uh, but there's no catfish in the yeah. Gulf. Okay, so how much does it cost to go through Camp Jeep? That's absolutely free. Uh, just you have to get in. in the. You have to get your pay your admission to get into the facility here. Correct. Right? Correct. Yeah, and then you just come over here and stand yeah. in line and yeah, you just sit, sign in and uh, sign a little is waiver. It, okay. Is there an age limit? Uh, there isn't an age limit. There is a height limit, so they have to be at least 44 inches. Oh, so Jeff can't go. No. Yeah. We, yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 44 inches. 44 inches or yeah. higher. And that's it. And that's it. That's okay. It. And and you can haul three people at a time. One, two, three people at a time. Whoever fits in the back seat. Right. Now, this is behind us, and I've been watching the line during the show, and it goes pretty quick. Yeah, we go. Yeah, we, it, we have it pretty. It moves. Yeah, we got it pretty. Uh, the How long now. does it take to go through the course? Uh, it'll take maybe sometimes three minutes. Oh, wow. Really, three that long? Minute, yeah. It's not two like minutes. standing in line at Disney and, and you know, it's a small world or something. Yeah. It moves pretty quick. Oh, now I'll be singing that in my head the rest of the night. There you go, Conrad. <laughs> Do that. It's Sing it to me, will you? <laughs> After <laughs> all. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, but we're sick. So, and if people, once they finish and if they want to go back on the ride again, just go get back in the back of the line. Yeah. You guys are okay well, with that? If they, are, if they take the first ride, they don't have to wait in line. So they take one lap, and then we have a little section where they just wait, and they could pick the vehicle they actually wanted to get. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, so okay. Na- cool. name me the vehicles. You got the Wrangler. Yeah, we got all different kinds of Wranglers. Yes, and speaking of different Wranglers, we do have our electrical Wrangler, the, the E, the 4 okay. by E. 4 by yeah. E. Yeah. It's out there. So you so that's available to take a ride in. That's available to take a ride in cool. and it's available to buy right now. And then you got the 392. Yep, we got 392. There you go. And what are the other ones? Uh, we do have the Gladiator, the Mojave. Uh, we also have the Rubicon Gladiator, uh, the Trawhawk. Grand Cherokee, Chawhawk, Cherokee. That's what we got. Nice. Man. So you, yeah. How many vehicles in total you got over there? I was there? trying oh, to man. count. <laughs> so right now on the track, we'll have about six or seven, depending. And then a couple that are staged. Yeah. yeah. So total, we'll have about nine or ten vehicles. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, yeah. I, so, so if I wanted to take a ride in one of them that's staged, if I, I could let you know, and somehow or another it could be kind of moved in? Yeah. Yeah, well, actually, if, uh, I think what you were saying is if you go around once, there's a there's an area you can wait. And if you want to get maybe the first time you went around, you went around in a Cherokee and you want to go in the 392 uh, Wrangler. Uh, Wrangler, I just have to wait till that comes around and then you'd load me in the 392 Wrangler. Correct. Wow. Exactly. Yes. I asked yeah. Rochelle this. Where do you keep the keys for these? <laughs> Hidden from <laughs> give us. Him right? yeah, give him the same answer. That's confidential. Yeah, that's the same answer Rochelle gave him. So. <laughs> I'm going to keep asking. <laughs> So uh, how many how many rides will you actually give? Yeah, I know you guys count the people uh-huh. that go through. 
So in a typical event like this, you know, this one here just happens to be five days long. Yeah. How many thousands of people do you run through there? Oh, man, it's it's hard to tell. Um, obviously, with uh, the quarantine going on, so it's a little different this year. But originally, like, we would give um, uh, one of our biggest shows we actually do is, like, Chicago. That's, like, right. the Super Bowl. Yep, uh-huh. Right. And, man, even one day we'll give. Oof. Thousand? Yeah, about that. Wow. <laughs> Maybe a little less, but. Around that area. So, how many how many people are on your team over here at Camp Jeep? So, there we have a total of about six drivers for six vehicles. We have a total of out of eight nine of us, apart from everybody else that's working around. Right. I mean, there could be like forty people. Oh wow! wow. Yeah. Tracks. You got to handle people getting in, people getting yeah. out, plus the drivers. You got to have some relief for the drivers. Yeah, plus uh, the sanitation the the cleanup. Yeah. The sanitation yeah. cleanup. Yes, uh, spotters that we have up there just for uh, safety precautions. So Didn't even think about that. Yeah. It's cool. a lot of folks. And then all 40, if the number was 40, it might be a little bit more, a little bit less. But all 40 of you will show up at the next event, or do you con- subcontract in some, some of those yeah. uh, positions? Well, as far as, like, the drivers go and myself, uh, it's usually, like, the same team. Yeah. Uh, they trust us more with these vehicles. Oh, yeah, I would, I would think that's important. Yeah, very important. So they trust us more, and which is good for us. It's good that they, they want us to do it, right. and we're happy to do it. So well, plus you also know how to answer the questions with I the just people that, that you're riding around. That, yeah. that was yeah. my question. So when you get in the, in the vehicle with a, a Jeep driver, does the, is the Jeep driver knowledgeable enough to answer the questions about the vehicle? Yes. Actually, it's, it's basically almost being like a product specialist. So gotcha. oh. uh, there are Jeep fans. Uh, we all had a Jeep. I had my own Jeep. So, and you've gone through Jeep training. Yeah, we do the training, and we the more we learn, the more easier it is, and we, sure. we like it. I mean, that's. And then you got a team thing going on because yeah. you all go to the same events. Yeah. And yeah. you all go drinking every night. <laughs> I was going to think you see, yeah. So, so, so tea and water. Yeah. yeah, yeah, tea and water. Good answer. So, I mean, is this? Um, do you know each other outside of this? Oh, we do. So we're really tight now. I mean. We've known some of us have been together for eight years, six wow. years, five years. Uh, but we are like Does a family. Does everybody live on South Padre I was Island? about to ask the same thing. <laughs> no. well, I was trying to figure out how to ask that <laughs> Different without parts asking of the it. Country. Yeah, I'm actually the only one from South Padre Island and Texas, actually. Wow. Uh, so there's people from Colorado, Utah, Vegas, Michigan, of course. You're kind of like the uh, Oscar Mayer Wiener, Wienermobile crew from all over the United yeah. States. <laughs> And they've got different wiener mobiles, and they have different crews that drive the wiener mobiles. There you go. I think that there's a there's something there. Maybe maybe we, we could get a wiener mobile here. With the, with the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With the Oscar That's it. So, so how many how many shows? I could go for a wiener. Typically, do y'all do it a um, year? Originally, we usually do about fifteen to eighteen shows. At least once a month, then. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Sometimes there's two shows going on at the same time, so it depends. Like. Maybe there's a show here, and maybe there's another show in Washington at the same time. So, where so there's is, where, another Camp Jeep? Right up? now, no. Okay. But they, you, so originally, they used to be as. Is this your uh, first Camp Jeep since COVID? Our first one we did was in Orlando. Okay. Which was, uh, I'm going to say, the beginning of the year. We I'm not too sure. Florida opened up like Texas did. Yes. So far as the COVID. Yeah. Where is your next stop after this? Uh, our next stop would probably be Chicago. Chicago for me. Right. Yeah, so that that's the summer auto show uh, there, and it's going to be in July, I think. Isn't yeah, it? which is strange for us because we're usually in February. Yeah, the snow and stuff. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> is it is it going is it going to be indoors for you or outdoors? Do you I know be- yet? I'm not too sure. I believe yeah. it might be indoors. Though. Well, last year when they were planning it, it was going to be outdoors because they they were going to take over part of. Uh, well, no, that, I'm sorry, that was the Detroit. Never mind. That was Detroit was going to make a big deal outside. Yes, yes, that was going to be our big big show. So when we pack all this up and we're ready to um, remove ourselves from the show. Can all five of us come in one of your rides? Can sure. You, can you set that up? I don't Absolutely. think all five of us could fit. Yeah, I don't know. About, yeah, it's going to be all cramped up in there, but. <laughs> Just stack we us in like cornwood. We could try. Wood, yeah. We're usually <laughs> cramped up. Let's see how much room's in the bed of that gladiator. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, sure, anytime you guys want to go. You know, just look for me, and I'll get you guys right How in. quickly does the line move? Oh, it goes quick. I mean. Even though, even though there's maybe 10, 15 people ahead of you, how long will that take if yeah. I'm at the end of a 15-person line? It actually feels like it's five minutes because you're looking at the track, and you're looking yeah. at the courses right. and the vehicles, and before you know it, right in front of the line. So they're, they're occupied. 
sure. while they're, while they're waiting right. in line. So yeah. it does seem a lot shorter. Because, yeah, you know they're they're looking at the going up the hill and then they're looking at coming down the hill. Plus the different vehicles. Each one of them is a little bit different to watch. Right. And yeah. how different is each one to drive? It is a little different, especially right now that we have, like, there's already different motors uh, and engines, um, different type of uh, trim levels. You know, we have, like I said, there's Gladiators, but there's the Rubicon right. Gladiator. There's the Gladiator of Mojave. That's kind of new. And the Wranglers is just uh, so, a so lot of them. So the Wrangler E, yeah. is this the first time you've had it out? Yeah, this is the first time. So, so an auto how, how's the batteries holding up? That's, it's good. We have our charging station. So basically what the E is, is uh, it's, it'll go about 21 miles fully charged, which is two hours. And it's also a hybrid. So it's not fully electronic. Oh, ah, okay. okay. So, so there is an uh, internal combustion engine that will take over when the battery charge gets right, low enough. Okay. Right. But and how does the how does the, it feel when it's on full electric? How does it feel climbing some of that? It actually feels good. It's real torquey, so it's just nice and smooth. You don't can't even hear anything when you have it yeah, electrical. Yeah. Something we don't know if it's on or off. We got to press it a couple of <laughs> times. It's something else. And, and then and then when you get in the three ninety two, it's probably got to be a little careful with the three ninety two. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm sure you can hear it sometimes when it passes through around here with, with that much power yeah. behind the wheel. Yeah, that's well, and they've got powerful. a special exhaust system on it too. <laughs> well, they have to. Oh. Yeah, you got to have you got to have some sounds. You know what I'm saying, Benny? It's great to see you. It's great to see you guys. Thank you very much, and yeah. uh, uh, we appreciate you stopping by, and uh, we uh, will be over there. And we, we invite everybody else to come on over to Camp Jeep. It's a great experience, and you guys do a wonderful job. Yeah, it's Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah, we appreciate it. Benny Munguia with Camp Jeep. Okay, time for us to take a quick break. We'll be right back on the In Wheel Time Car Show from the Houston Auto Show. Stay with us. We all know about aftermarket and online parts stores, and each one has something to offer, but they don't offer original factory parts. That's where Bayway comes in. For original factory parts, visit the Bayway stores first. Give them a call or stop by. Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Bayway Chevy, and Bayway Lincoln carry a complete line of parts for the do-it-yourselfer. Keeping your newer classic original means a lot, and you can count on these fully stocked parts departments to help keep it that way. Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Bayway Chevy, and Bayway Lincoln, keeping it original. Tailpipe and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise-in, and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, June 19th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free, and everyone is invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a free Friends and family event at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I-10 in Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Loopy founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in, Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, June 19th, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy. The In Wheel Time Car Show will be there too. Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday morning, June 19th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy. Inside the Loop, visit Tailpipes and Tacos on the Southwest Freeway at Shepherd, weather permitting. NHRA Camping World Drag Racing. It's an 11,000 horsepower Nitro Rodeo coming to Houston Raceway Park in Baytown. Catch all the Nitro and Pro Stock action at the Mopar Express Lane. NHRA Spring Nationals presented by Pennzoil this weekend. Matt Hagen, Leah Pruitt, Erica Enders, three-time world champ Steve Thorns, and 16-time himself John Force. Kids 12 and under are free in general admission. Get tickets at HoustonRaceway.com. Houston's got horsepower. Don't miss the first ever Houston Summer Auto Show, May 19th through the 23rd at NRG Center. A limited edition collection of your favorite brands and models, including the new Ford Bronco and Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Tickets online only at HoustonAutoShow.com. Celebrating 10 years of award-winning car talk, it's the In Wheel Time Car Show. Today coming to you from the Houston Summer Auto Show at NRG Center. we got guests from the show lined up for you. We'll review our new car of the week, the 2021 Ford Ranger. Take a look at the events calendar and bring you this week's auto news headlines. That and more just ahead on today's In Wheel Time Car Show. Howdy along with Mike out of this world Mars in the red shirt. <laughs> King Conrad along here in the bowling shirt. In the bowling shirt. Bowling. 
Don Armstrong here in the black shirt. And then the we have the over t-shirt. here in a separate fan gallery, we've got the Jeffrey Zekin and David mm. Ainsley. We are so glad that you could join us here today from the Houston Auto Show Summer Edition. And also it's good to know that we are joined now finally by Ben Miller, the Houston Auto Show Classic car show. Now, I don't know what you actually call it up there, but we call it the classic auto show. Am I right? What's the classic section? So The classic section. We're the classic section. That's what his t-shirt Yeah, I was just going to say, classic. well, we fit right in up there, there don't go. we? Yep. He's, got yep. a, he's, he's got the t-shirt. This, I think this is an ant- old shirt, oh, though. That's the 2018. So. I think yeah. we're <laughs> antiques, Tom. We are. Anything we're, over 50 we, is an antique. We would be the antique section, not the classic section. I like classic at my age. I prefer classic over antique. You would, yeah. Well, you're, you're more dignified than me. Classic. We're well, antique. I don't know about that. But <laughs> Becky said old. Old, Becky. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Did she? Is there an out-to-pasture Thank you, dear. club? Out-to-pasture yeah, club. Yeah, yeah. There's that. So, Ben, what have you brought us this year? Well, we've got about 20 really good cars. Do you remember which 20 exactly <laughs> that are out there? It's, it's going to be tough to remember them all, but I, I know most of them. Well, so. first of all, let us explain that uh, out of the kindness of his heart, Ben manages to gather up some of the finest classic resto mod, uh, antique, uh, cool cars generally in the Houston area that there are to be found. Mm-hmm. He gathers them up, friends of his, contacts of his. This guy is connected. He's a car connected kind of guy. More That's connected cool. than us. He's yeah. got some cool cars. I know he does. <laughs> and you know, I was telling Conrad uh, before, I said, you know, it's amazing that every year we always say we're going to contact Ben Miller during the year, have him on the show, and we're going to talk about his connections and the people that he knows and cars that they have. And what happens? We never call you. Why is that? Do we have his number? Well, this year I think it's. You know, it, no, it, we're not buying that. No, it's we're not. not nope. No, no. Okay. The, the, COVID, okay. <laughs> the COVID thing is just an excuse now. But uh, at any rate, so you need to ha- give him your phone number. I, I think he's got it. I got it. I think We he's never call him. Why is that? So it's your fault. Do you I want to give it on the it's air? It's always my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, knew, I was just waiting for you to get there. <laughs> I got you. And I think my wife was packed to get there before you were. Oh, yeah, well. No doubt. It's 1-900. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. So what uh, – what I, I don't. I don't want to press you too hard, but for me, I could maybe remember two cars. So, what did, uh, what did you remember? Uh, none, because I haven't seen any <laughs> of them. Oh, privileging. <laughs> so, what kind of toys did you bring this year? Um, well, it's a really good mix, like usual. You know, like y'all said, there's there's really early stuff. There's muscle cars. There's you know. So, um, what we basically based everything on is with it being the summer show, they wanted summer. Type cars. So, so we got some convertibles. convertibles out there. A lot of convertibles. Cruisers. Um, have a, t- a VW, a 21 window VW bus. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, so there's a surf theme going on. Yes, and uh-huh. it's got a surfboard on top. Nice. It's, the combi. Um, and then the same owner has a, a 56 Porsche uh, 356 convertible over there. That's. Oh it's, my gosh! And, and it's a real car. It's not a kit car. It's it's a real car. So this thing so. isn't worth anything, is it? Oh. A little, little bit, a little yeah. bit. They have ropes around it to keep. I was just going to say, right. is is it busted out of the six figure group? Is it into the se- It's a seven figure car. It's, it's a six fi- Yeah, solid six figure car. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Do you have any, you know, regular guy cars like Chevys out there or something? Of course. Yeah. There's just a few that are a little more rare than the others. I have a uh, seventy old four four two W thirty convertible. That's what, a what it's color? A, Yellow. I thought they all were. He's and, in. I thought and they were all yellow. And, Mine's all yellow. And it's got black, uh, black stripes. And from what I've been told by the owner, uh, that's it's a one of one. So there's not another W thirty four four two yellow with black stripes out there. It's convertible. It's, it's convertible. convertible. It's, well, it's, a convertible W thirty is a very rare car, and then the color combinations. Um, make them even rarer. It's so. a very, very good car. And then, of course, Gullo, he's he's a great guy. Yeah. He brought two uh, two cars down for us. He brought a uh, 40 Ford convertible 
and then a 56 Buick Century convertible. Oh, my God. How, how cool yes. is that? Yeah. He, yeah. Would, he, was, he was thinking about bringing a, a Woody. Um, I think it was a 34 Woody wagon, but when the Buick showed up, I said, that's – That'll, 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 that'll do. That'll, that'll, that'll do. Yeah. And, and, and how cool is that to come out of a, a non-publicly viewed collection? So this is probably the only time anybody's going to get an opportunity to see these cars. Correct. Yeah. Right. Um, if, if you're able to, like with his cars, the cool thing is at some of his dealerships, like at the Ford dealership, he'll actually put some on the floor during Christmas. or So I've actually been up there and seen that. So it's, that's it's pretty nice. cool. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, Any tri fives? I have a '55 Nomad over there that's Ooh, real sweet. Make my yeah. heart beat fast. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, is it a, is it a yellow Nomad? It's a yellow Nomad. I'm yep. thinking I'm thinking Hollywood Nights. Oh, okay. Of course. And it's and it's <laughs> a Lawrence <laughs> Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> he went to fight the Turkish. He's an English kind of guy. Me me. It's it's a really nice car. It's a resto mod, so it's not it's not original, but it's it's. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't have a problem with resto no, mods. No, no, no. I mean, I understand that there are some vehicles that are so close to being a survivor that okay, restore them. But once they get to a certain point, to me, put the disc brakes right. on it and put put the automatic in it and drive it. Well, there's a lot of people that know me and and the cars that I I have or had and. Uh, they're all pretty much stock, you know, and they think, oh, well, he, he, he's more of the stock guy. That's, but I'm open to pretty much everything. A, a well-done resto mod, because when you watch the auctions now, some of the well-done resto mods are bringing bring more. way more mm -hmm. than the original pure stock car. Well, and they can actually drive them, you know. Right. I mean, some of the stock cars, you know, they just, they're not like. And, and they're not afraid to drive them because, you know, would you truly drive as a daily driver, a true 69 uh, Z28 DZ, no. you know, no. You know, but would you drive a, a mock, a look-alike that's a got an LS motor, motor in it or, or some a coyote motor? You put a, put a Ford motor in No, 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 no. I'm, saying, I'm saying in a, in a Ford, you know. <laughs> yeah. if you had a, well, yeah, you said Mustang. But, yeah. but, you know, it looks like a Z28, and it's got an LS in it, and a, you know, fully automatic, and it's got AC. all the – Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I yeah. drive that Something every day. Something you can drive around yeah. Houston, Texas. Yeah, um, I don't know. There, there's some really good cars over there. Uh, there's one car that's really cool. It, it's it's a newer one. It's a '88 Fox body. But the cool thing is, uh, it was a father and son project, and they finished it. And so the son said, uh, "Hey, is there any way I can show the car up there?" And I said, "Well, yeah. I mean, that's that's possible. So it's kind of cool to have. You had to have the younger people like me." continue this Getting on engaged, but but right. that generation well, what about me no i'm not a younger <laughs> oh no <laughs> go ahead but that generation fox body has got a huge following for you some know. reason it does no yeah. it, it's it's got it for the reason it's lightweight you can put a lot of power oh, well, in it. I, I, some you know. some people even say that's like the next try five you know people are going to be you know really over it and that's oh. that's it, probably yeah. I mean, you have you have the cars that are original, and you have the cars that are uh, Modern. you know modified. So, and and they've made plenty of them. Oh yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You know, good. Well, and, and a good variety of them too. Right. But yeah. with the Fox body cars, uh, the, sh the Mustangs, you're going. Wait a minute! You just don't see that many anymore. They've all been used up, and when one you see one, you pay attention to mm -hmm. it. Yeah, locked you know? up or used up, one of the two. Yeah. yeah. My uh, my buddy had a uh, '93 Cobra, and I've I've actually found it for him. It had 30,000 miles on it. It was mint. I mean, it was a really nice car. And now, if you tried to find that car today, it's just a lot tougher. You know, same sure. thing with the first gen Lightnings. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I have yeah. one of those. Used to, you could see, you, you could find those more so than like the Cobras. But now, I've looked here recently, and they're. So, not. are you going to get the next gen Lightning? I'm not. No. <laughs> <laughs> not your cup of tea? No. Not I, mine either. I, you know, once you get used to, you know, like the first gen, the second gen. You the get, performance. Yeah. Exactly. It, it's not, it's not the same. Either, it's not the same. No. <laughs> I think we'll probably talk about that a little bit later in the yeah, show, if yeah. not today, tomorrow. Well, there, there is something really cool, though, uh, a, a friend of mine brought up, and it belongs to a family, actually, but there's a 1931 Ford mail truck that has never, it hasn't seen any shows or anything until this show. It was restored about 20 years ago, I think, 
and since then it's been in the in the garage. Oh wow! So it's real unique. I mean, you said it was a what a, year? A 1931 Ford. Oh, how cool! Mail truck. So mail it's truck. it's it's like a delivery truck, I guess, but it, it's got the storage on the back and everything. It, it's really neat. So 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 these vehicles that you've got in the the classic car section, if if I remember right, you look for vehicles that haven't been here before. I tried to. Yeah, I, I, if there's cars that have been here 10 years ago or something like that, then I, I'll definitely uh, bring them back in because it's been a long time, you know. But I don't like to bring the same cars in every time. Yeah, you're yeah. looking for something new. New, yeah, because, I mean, there's some people that probably wouldn't remember them, but a lot of the car guys, if they're like me, they'll say I've seen that car before. What I've is seen. that little yellow and white one with the big blower sticking out of the motor's bigger than Metro. the car? Yeah. The Nash. Yeah. The Nash. Is it, was it a Nash? Me- Metro? Yes. Nash, anyway. Nash Metropolitan. Yeah, I mean, it, that's one of them. Once you see it, every time you see it, you know I've seen that car before. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's so distinct in the way because of the big blower sticking out of the hood. I mean, it's almost as big as the car. Yeah, there's there's guys I know. Like, there's one guy I talked to here recently. He had probably 40 or 50 cars back in 08 or 09. And, I mean, they were all really good cars. And I saw them at a, a restaurant down by me, and I was talking to him, and I said, you know, I remember this one, this one, this one, that, you know. So I can remember, depending on the car, I can remember yeah, what all. Yeah, something really catches your attention, mm-hmm. yeah. So I think it's good that you, you try and get new ones, but it's got to be a job. I mean, it's, you got 20 cars this year? Yes, sir. They, so, they want to – I mean, the show is a little bit smaller. Sure. Than, um, so they just wanted – to obviously uh, do something, like I said, with the summer show and just not go, you know, usually I have about 50 cars up here or more, and then I have them in the lobby and everything, and they just where said. Are, where are your displays not in the lobby? No, there, there are some cars out there, but uh, that belongs to a pace car collector, uh, those cars out there, and uh, those were brought in uh, through the office, through the auto show office. Oh, so, not through you? Not through okay. me, no. So. Tell us about how do so you wait, make wait your... just a minute. So where is your collection of cars? It's it's over by Camp Jeep actually. So okay. where, where y'all talked before, I'm I'm over to the right, and uh, there's a, a beer garden over there, and uh, beer garden. That's yeah. it. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Here, here. That's why we haven't seen it's it yet. Just what I need is a beer it's garden and a W30 442. Well, that's exactly convertible. What convertible. It right, is convertible. Right so in the, the middle cans. of the beer garden is a 1929 Rolls Royce and the mail truck. So you can't oh, wow. can't miss it. Can't. <laughs> so how do you? make these connections with people how do you find those cars is really the question you know it, it, some of it probably some friends and stuff this, but how this do you is con- some big well-kept how secret do you, how do you grow that connection to these well, different cars you just have to go to different shows and then there will be a buddy that knows a buddy and you know you just you, you just have to meet people i mean that's basically it you, you can't there's there's a lot of stuff that i've found out you know it, not even with this with this title you know just talking to different people about different collections that people have no no idea about you know my buddy always tells me you could be driving down a road in houston and you could see a garage open up and you'd say well i've never seen those cars before you know so it just and there is way more of those than people know it's way more Uh, well it's, it's like tony gullo you were talking about i have always heard about his collection i've never seen it you see one car here, one well, car there. Well, we've been invited, but it's it just it hasn't it's never worked, really worked out. out but right. you know, so <clears throat> it's not open to the public, and no. so you've got to know Tony right. uh, uh, to actually get invited up there. It's kind of like uh, Daryl Wisniewski. Yeah, he has yeah. a absolutely stunning car collection. I don't know if those cars have ever seen the light of days once they've gone into his collection. And you've got to know Daryl or somebody that knows Daryl to get to, to get in. And uh, that day that, and matter of fact. Might as well just spill the beans. Sometime over the summer, we are going to go down there and have uh, our normal in-wheel-time car show on a Saturday. And we're going to go down there and take a gander inside Daryl's garage. Oh, cool. And it is, promises, uh, promises, promises. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I had to get through this little hump that we've got this weekend, this show. And then tomorrow, we're going to be at the NHRA drag races in Baytown. So, uh, you know, it's, busy been, weekend. it's been it's been a busy or will be a busy couple of days for us. Mm-hmm. But once we get past this, we can start focusing on a summer show 
uh, that I want to do down at Daryl's place. That would be great. Yeah. But yeah. as you know better than anybody else, it's amazing some of the collections here in Houston. I was going to tell you, I've got a, uh, I've got a few collectors with me this time, and they've been with me before. But I have one that he's he's got about probably eighty five cars. Wow. So I mean, and and it's not it's another one that's not open to the public, you know. So it's his own personal connect collection. You know, mm-hmm. Stan Holt, a Loopy Tortilla fan, he's got quite a collection of cars. And well, we haven't been out there yet. No, no. But when you, we'll we'll get out there, and when we do, you're going to go, oh my gosh, look at this! It's impressive. These are guys like us that have clearly uh, more money better, than we do. Uh, more money than we do. That that are car which is collect- easy to do. Yeah, yeah. we're the uh, true car collectors, and um, you know some of them collect. Old cars. Some of them collect resto mods. Daryl, his collection is muscle cars. Muscle car, original muscle cars, and uh, some of them have been restored back to their original condition. Other are others are the actual original car. He's got a GT non-restored GT out there that it still has the plastic on the seats. Oh gosh, yeah. Uh, so it's a it's an eclectic collection of collectors i've never been to his collection but you know going to the shows over the years and everything i've seen different cars autorama he's he used to show there yep. and he's got some very nice cars most, very nice most definitely mm-hmm. and uh, do you know daryl i do i talked to him at keels and wheels uh, when he was out there we were so. out there too in the rain <laughs> This it year, was, this it year. was wet. It was pouring. Yeah. So, have you met John? You know John Hovis from yes. Hemi High Down. Well, I, I don't know him um, personally, but I've been out to the Hemi. Yeah. What? Yeah. A, what? That's a, a nice, beautiful, place. open to the public collection. But I don't think he's done anything since COVID. No. I think they've been no, completely he, shut uh, down. We talked to him. They uh, they're looking at trying to get cranked up again, maybe late June. Yeah, this summer. So they were checking with us about scheduling and see what we could yep. do to help oh, good, them out. Good, good, good. See, we're. My dad and I, we collect uh, old porcelain signs, like what? He, not, not like. I oh mean, he's got the neons. And, I mean, we we have some, but I mean that that's one thing with that collection is even if you had the building just with the signs, you would say, oh my gosh, breathtaking. But then now you have the cars in there, and it just it's over the top. Well, it the truly. cars, the, the, the tractors, yeah. the, the motorcycles, and what's his his latest is all of the gun. Um, Oh, oh, ammunition the ammuni- and the ammunition I haven't been out there. An- <laughs> antique stuff with that. Oh, yeah, all this stuff. It's I crazy. think John get, just get, catches a, an interest in something and, and goes runs full, full bore yeah, at that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So <clears throat> what is your background? How did you get into this? Are you a collector yourself? I wouldn't say I'm. We, we've had a few cars, um, so I, I wouldn't say I'm a collector, but we've we've Usually, like right now, I think we have about seven, I think. Okay, what do you got? Um, we have a 71 Boss 351, a 71 Mach 1, a 69 Shelby GT350. Oh, God. Um, I'm seeing a trend here. He knows He knows <laughs> Randy Weldon. Oh, everybody knows uh, Randy Weldon. <laughs> 95 Ford Lightning, a uh, 54 Chevy pickup truck. That's a little – that's a little – well, that's your one-off. <laughs> that's the one-off, yeah. And then I have another car that's newer, um, but it's a 2009 uh, Terlingua. Okay, the Mustang. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Terling- Terlingua, I can't Texas. pronounce it. Texas. Terlingua, Texas. Was uh, kind of Shelby's home base at one point, wasn't well, it? Well, he, he would go down there, and Test. that's where they would go party and everything so uh basically uh, uh, what drink a few beers at the beer garden yeah i wouldn't know anything about any of that <laughs> it was the a pure, chili it was a chili that made him do it that. was a chili <laughs> there you go that's that's part of the story down there yeah so um we had that car and and the odd thing about it is there's only two convertibles so it's one of the convertibles and all the cars were built at uh uh, Las Vegas at Shelby, so oh, okay. or most most of them. There's a few that were built at uh, Tasca, and uh, there was another place in Dallas that was doing them. But for the most part, they they came out of Las Vegas. Yeah, Tasca is the Ford dealer in New England. Yes, is, sir. I don't know if it's actually they have, Boston, but they have a lot of know. racing history. <laughs> they've 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 been with Ford a long time. Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I w- imagine that. Uh, he'll be out at uh, Houston Raceway Park this weekend. 
Bob Tasca the third. Uh -huh. He has a, a symbol on the side of his car. It says BG. His, you would know that. I, absolutely. I photograph it all the time. <laughs> I work for BG. <laughs> yep. So kind of happy to see that. So, um, okay. So you got all the collection. You got your own collection. Uh, and you are a well connected. You're a connected collection collector. I, I try to be. I With clean to. copper clappers. <laughs> 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 there's always more to find. You know, I've, I've learned that there's there's no way you can know about every there there's always more stuff to find out there so and, and nothing really surprises me now i mean if someone said hey you know this guy has 300 cars i would say well probably you know yeah probably. who well, might argue with that no I, or even some of the the storage places here in town that have two and three hundred cars it may be owned by 20 or 30 different 50 different people but they house all of their cars, they care for their cars, and it's kind of like a, um, oh, they, they call in and they'll get the car ready and park it outside. Like concierge. Like a, like a concierge. concierge. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I couldn't yeah, think yeah. of the yeah. word. But yeah. 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 yeah, they have a, uh, it's like climate controlled storage, right, but right, they right. maintain them and everything. Yeah, yeah. They, they got a little shop inside there. Mm -hmm. We keep them running, keep the fluids flowing. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to see your cars out in the foyer of foyer. NRG. Foyer. Yeah. The, the lobby. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you Let's go. all go to the lobby. <laughs> Let's all go to the lobby. <laughs> no, I, I don't have any out there this, this time. In January, we'll be back to, to the North. lobby again. Mm -hmm. and, now, uh, did you know this pace car collector? I don't personally know him. Uh, Wyatt, who's head of the, the auto show, he, he knows him. So Okay. And, but I have seen um, the cars. I don't think I've seen these cars here before, but I have seen them displayed uh, uh, before. So he's, he's got a bunch of pace cars. That's pretty much all there is, is pace cars. What a cool collection that's got to be, though, too. That's, yeah. You know, you think through the years, there's, what, 100-some-odd years of indie pace cars um, and some really cool ones mm -hmm. through, the, through the 60s and 70s. Yep, there's a 70 Olds uh, convertible out there. I didn't even have to say it. I yep, knew he'd say yep. it. Yep. Pathetic. <laughs> well, you just don't see those, you know, so it's, it's kind of cool to see. It's yeah. Yeah. Oldsmobile had quite a few pace cars. It's a matter of opinion. They did seven, <laughs> 70, 72, 77, 88. Dr. Oldsmobile over here. Mm -hmm. uh, then they had the Little Red Calais, and then they did an Oldsmobile Aurora. Yeah, they had quite a few. I think so, Conrad, if you haven't figured it out, actually worked for the Oldsmobile division of General Motors for quite some time. Oh, some time. So, he is a Olds nut. Olds Aficionado. Freak. Aficionado. Afic that's the, oh, that's, that's way over the top. But, yes, you're right. But I don't have a collection of them. I only have one of them. But I wish I did have a collection of them, but... And you would add the 442 and the, the oh, one God. in the lobby? Yeah, yeah. And he'd yeah. find stuff to put in the trunk of each one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, when I show my I, – I had my car at Autorama. I couldn't open the trunk because it was just full of stuff. I mean, I mean, like, completely packed full of use, junk, useless you, junk. You call it stuff. There's other words. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and was this – what what was in there? You know, usually there's cleaning supplies. No, or what, yeah. no, no there was cases of water, rope, spare tire, rope. rope. There's yeah, duct tape, uh, jumper cable, blankets. It sounds like storage. It is storage. <laughs> okay. A lot of used parts, and not used parts. A lot of parts I bought and put in the trunk so my wife wouldn't know. That is were, such I've, a lie. That his wife tell, wouldn't know. He's been telling us that for two years that, now. That that is totally and put a any lie. Of it on the car. <laughs> when yeah. was the last time you drove it? Oh, gosh. Mr. Oh, there Pinocchio you know. here. There's your answer. October? <laughs> October of, of 2017? what? 2017? No, last year. I had it out in October last year. Yeah? Yep, it's got an time. ignition switch problem, yeah. but he won't fix that either. What, do you, what year it. is it? To 70, Rally 350. Oh. So He's got an ignition all, switch in his trunk. It's his all works. 442, but it's got the 350 engine in it. It's got the yellow bumpers, the mm -hmm. urethane bumpers on them. Yeah. So kind of a unique little it car. It is. It's very unique looking. Yeah. That's a, that's a good car. 
So maybe if I clean it up and get the trunk empty, he can have it at the show next That's year. Right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I could be a collector. I have a goal to achieve. That's right. And, and a new set of tires. He's got 10-year-old tires oh, gosh, on it. Oh, gosh, yeah. I've got to get new tires. They're all mm-hmm. cracked. and <laughs> They probably don't have 3,000 miles on them, but they're over 10 years old. Yeah. yeah. Very disappointing. Especially with a tire guy here. Yeah. He beat me up on it. Well, if, if we have to, you can bring it up here, and we can just push it in. I mean. <laughs> no, it, 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 well, no, it, it drives it, when he can but it's when he puts a new switch when in he it. can start it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well yeah. don just got new tires he had 10 year old tires on no, no. no they're coming up on five five okay. five on your corvette on the corvette yes so it's got new rubber on it now baby got new shoes baby got new shoes it's got an alignment it's got a new battery and um, fluids are all been oh, changed yeah, it's all, oh that was on you it's all looking good yeah we're gonna take and it a little, sits under a cover yeah we're gonna, we're he gonna doesn't drive it very much either Take it out on a little road trip here this next week. Woo-hoo. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Take, thinking take a, thinking about going on up to uh, LaGrange. Oh. oh. There's a home out in LaGrange. Mm-hmm. Home mm-hmm. out in LaGrange. There's <laughs> also quite a collection up in LaGrange. Yeah. Of what? Of co- There's a car collection yeah. up in oh. LaGrange. I've, uh, the, uh, I've known a couple of people, and I want to say Randy and the Mustang. Oh, no, not the Rabbit collection. <clears throat> The, the car collection. <laughs> the God, Don. It's the Madam collection. You. I didn't say anything. You just dreamed all that up in your own mind. Yeah. You're in my mind, Don. <laughs> That's right. That's scary. Oh, boy. It is. Here we go. But I can't help myself. It's mm. just that who I am, you know. Pe- people like him seek me out. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I don't. No, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still in trouble with my wife because Don recommended a restaurant in in California for easy, my easy. wife and, easy. and son and daughter to go eat at. Yeah, called Asia SF. Mm. And what what happened? It's no, a drag well, show. Uh, oh, it's, it's a, a really good drag show. <laughs> so send your comments to info at inwheeltime.com. Well, no, it's well, what's free wrong advertising with for what? them. This what? is an auto show. What's, what's this wrong, this what's is wrong with show. that? Well, we're going to the drag show tomorrow. Drag we are going to go to but it's a different drag show. There's no dresses <laughs> oh, there. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, ben, boy. it's great to see you. It's great to see you, too. Thank you so much for stopping by. It's always a pleasure, and we love to hear the stories that you've got to share and obviously the car collections that you managed to pick from. And this time, we are going to call you. Okay. Aren't we? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You have it. I I gave him him my card. We we have it on camera, then. We have a card. Do I need to give one to y'all so that y'all can keep track? Sure. Maybe. Give us two. Okay. Okay. Ben yeah. Miller. That way, when they lose one, they Houston can Houston Auto one. Show Classic Edition. Back behind Camp Jeep over here. Be sure and uh, stop Come by out and check them out. Yeah, and see them. All right. We're going to have more of uh, the In Wheel Time Car Show Special Edition, or as we call it, the In Wheel Time Extra. Extra, and extra. Extra, and it's going to continue right after a quick break, so stay with us. Let me tell you about a locally owned and operated group of dealerships called Bayway. Bayway owner Daryl Wisniewski is born and raised right here, and he knows Houstonians better than anyone. Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, Bayway Lincoln and Bayway Chevrolet are managed by Lincoln Stahl. And when you get to know these guys, you'll want to become part of the Bayway family too. Feel good that you're part of Houstonian-owned Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram.com, Bayway Chevrolet.com, and Bayway Lincoln.com. Remember the name, Bayway. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise-in, and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, June 19th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free, and everyone is invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event at the Lupe Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard just south of I-10 in Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Lupe founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in, Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, June 19th, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Lupe's in Katy. The In Wheel Time Car Show will be there, too. Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday morning, June 19th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Lupe's in Katy. Inside the Loop, visit Tailpipes and Tacos on the Southwest Freeway at Shepherd, weather permitting. 
NHRA Camping World Drag Racing. It's at 11,000 horsepower Nitro Rodeo coming to Houston Raceway Park in Baytown. Catch all the Nitro and Pro Stock action at the Mopar Express Lane. NHRA Spring Nationals presented by Pennzoil this weekend. Matt Hagen, Leah Pruitt, Erica Enders, three-time world champ Steve Thorns, and 16-time himself, John Force. Kids 12 and under are free in general admission. Get tickets at HoustonRaceway.com. Houston's got horsepower. Don't miss the first ever Houston Summer Auto Show, May 19th through the 23rd at NRG Center. A limited edition collection of your favorite brands and models, including the new Ford Bronco and Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Tickets online only at HoustonAutoShow.com. Houstonian-owned Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has the most sought-after models in the Houston area today. When you're in the market for a new or used vehicle, you now have a place to go. General Manager Lincoln Stahl guarantees Bayway will beat any competitor's written price on the new vehicle you choose or pay you $1,000. Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is easy to get to on Highway 225 near Beltway 8 in Pasadena. Whether it's online or in person, you're welcome like one of the family. Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram.com. <laughs> Celebrating 10 years of award winning car talk, it's the In Wheel Time Car Show, your go to all things automotive place today. Coming to you from the Houston Summer Auto Show at NRG Center. It's a special edition on this Friday. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars, King Conrad DeLong, Jeff Zekin, the fabulous transmission specialist, David mm. Ainsley. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad to join us today. It's a great day, and you know we're going to uh, kind of uh, go off of our usual format, Uh-oh. if that's okay with you, Mr. Yeah. Mars. Because yes, he's sir. A, Following he's, you. All right. So I thought that what we would do, since this is a new car show, that we would review a new car. And I happen to have had a 2021 BMW M5. M5. Mm. <laughs> it comes in only one trim level, and that is the... Go fast. M5. I had the one that is optioned with the competition option, and it says it on the back of the car. Little, little bitty <laughs> tiny letters. M5 competition. This is a mid size sedan. Seats five passengers. It was all new in 2017. Uh, refreshed front and rear styling and a bigger touchscreen adorn the 2021 model. Wow. Exterior features include carbon fiber roof. Yeah. It's not painted. It's It's carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. Take weight off. Straight line sides, blacked out grill and lower valance, quad exhaust. What I liked about it, those gold brake calipers. Sexy. Yeah, they are. And they also cost. Uh Uh-oh. Drum roll. $8,500. $8,500. Whoa. Because they... The brake calipers. Uh-huh. Well, is, what's what's in the calipers, I think, add to the cost because they are the ceramic, uh, brake, ceramic brake pads. $8,500 mm-hmm. option. Oh, Nelly. You're not, you're not going Eight, down. Let you're me repeat that. Down, That's an $8,500 option for brakes that how you much? can't even see. What? How much? 8500 bucks. So you're not going to go eat pads at AutoZone. <laughs> yeah, and, and you don't want to sit out there with a shimmy shine and spray your tires with shimmy shine because <laughs> if you get it on those brake rotors, you'll ruin them. The shimmy shine. Yeah. Is that like Jimmy shine? Jimmy shine, shimmy shine. Jimmy you know, shine it's is like from. Uh, old school guys would spray yeah, uh, okay. brake fluid on their tires. Moving jimmy on. shine. It was Jimmy Shine. That would be Hollywood Nights. Oh, well, but okay. I, I, I just, Maybe it was Jimmy Shine, not maybe. Shimmy Shine. What could use I like improvement? The shimmy, though. Hmm, nothing that I can tell. Oh, my gosh. Uh, interior highlights, configurable dash layout, standalone infotainment screen, uh, oh, M5, is, M5 labeling uh, uh, on the leather seating, competition door sill announcement, and carbon fiber accents on the center console and the door panels. You can tell this is uh, this is a high-end car. Mm. Cargo and trunk room adequate, but who cares about that when we're talking about a hot rod? What I liked about it, the German business-like racing layout. I mean, this is some serious business from Germany right here. Mm. Um, what could use improvement? I mentioned this earlier. I think that there are too many adjustment options in the computer 
Uh, even my astrophysicist daughter said, Dad, this is kind of overkill here, isn't it? Uh, well, talk I, about overkill. You're about to mention it. <laughs> yeah. So it had a 4.4 liter turbocharged V8 that turns out 600 horsepower, except <laughs> mine was the competition edition, and somehow, some way, they managed to squeeze out an extra 17 horsepower. Not that you'd be able to tell. 617 horsepower, 553 pound-feet of torque through an eight-speed automatic transmission. All-wheel drive, by the way. Probably needs it. <laughs> uh, miles per gallon, well, it wasn't available uh, because I didn't get the actual Monroney itself. I got a, a, a printout of all of the stuff that was on it. Uh, it does have a $1,000 gas guzzler tax on oh, it. Oh, boy. But, you know, the strange thing about that is, I even though I, I couldn't give you what the factory numbers are on gas mileage, I got 22.4 over 350 miles. Out of a 600-horsepower car. Which isn't too bad. That's so awesome. I, I don't I thought know. it was great. I don't, I'm not exactly sure how they say, oh, well, that car there has got, got to have the gas guzzler tax on it. I'm not sure how that works. Uh, what I liked about it? The rush of no lag power. I mean, it is, you, you touch that accelerator pedal, and it is whoosh, you're gone, brother. Whoosh. Ride and handling is that a technical feels term? like it can keep pace with an Indy car. What could use improvement? It's got a stiff ride, even, in the, even in the comfort setting. It's supposed it, to have a stiff ride. It's yeah, a hot ride. I know. It is. It, this car... Track-ready competition. It yeah. is. It truly is a track-ready car from the showroom floor. Base price on this is $103,500. The price is tested $136,045. What's them brake rotors? Yeah. <laughs> Base model price, $103,500. Competitors. Well... A head-to-head -head competitor is kind of tough, but here's what I came up with. An Audi RS7 for $115,045. Yeah, sure. Mercedes-Benz AMG E63 S sedan for $108,550. Or let's go to the Porsche Panamera Turbo S for $179,050. And that is my review of the 2021 BMW M5 here on the In Wheel Time Car Show. Well, the, stout. the interesting thing is, you know, they do what are called BMW taxis at the Nurburgring. And I'll bet you this is one of those taxis at the Nurburgring. So that 14 miles of, of uh, top speed course they have out there, they'll probably strap you in this with a professional driver and make you scream like a seven-year-old girl. Well, whoosh, you, you do whoosh. get you do get uh, one whoosh. day of uh, track time with this Driving car. school with uh, it? Driving when school. you buy the car? Yeah. Oh, that would be nice. Well, yeah. yeah they yeah, take you out on the beltway. Probably cost you a set of tires. <laughs> <laughs> that, and, and so you won't, you won't kill yourself when you get out there. Well, that's, you know, Keep people from doing stupid stuff, you know, when they won't. don't realize what they do. But yeah. that's, that's, you buy it for the city, for grocery getter, or you, do you buy it to go no, press the pedal? No, you don't buy it for that. You, you buy a car like this for the prestige of owning a very, very limited available BMW. And to let everybody know that you are a true dyed-in-the-wool car guy Not, yeah. that really appreciates the latest high-tech, and I do mean underscore high-tech stuff from Germany. Because, as I have told everybody, there is a really definite difference between American cars, Japanese cars, German cars. Yep. No, you're right. They're, they're uh, they, it, it's a whole different philosophy behind them. You know, we sell a lot of American cars in this country. And uh, there are a, a group of people in this country that really appreciate, the true Americans that truly appreciate, what Germany has to offer. And I agree. I mean, there are things about the German way of building a car that a lot of manufacturers in the United States could learn from. Well, and or go after. And their cars now have taken on a bit of that German flair. Ride, handling, Ride handling, power, all of the stuff. Trim, fit, and finish. All of that. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. It's all important. Very important stuff. Um, there are some uh, recalls that I wanted to get to. There's always recalls. Always. Uh, every week. Um, and, you know, there are pages and pages of them. Here's some from 
Uh, Arkamoto. I've never heard of Arkamoto. Don't really care, and I'm not going to tell you, dull you with that. Uh, Ducati recalls, Jayco recalls, Bluebird recalls. Just to give you an idea that anything with wheels on it gets recalled at some time or another. Bluebird's the bus. Yeah. So uh, as far as cars are concerned, Alfa Romeo, Giulia, and Stelvio from the 2019 to 2021 model years, rotor and shaft may separate, causing a loss of ABS. Okay. And I'll tell you what to do after you get done with all of these, how to handle it. Uh, Porsche, uh, the Cayenne line from 2020 through 2021. The E-Hybrid, the GTS, the S, and just the plain Cayenne. Missing seal heater may prevent airbag deployment. Yikes. Volkswagen has a bunch. Modifications to vehicles made them non-compliant. So they're going to recall the recall. On the diesels. some the 2016 through 2018 model years of Atlas, CC, E Golf, Golf, Golf R, Passat, Tiguan, and the Touring. I think that's everything. Pretty much. Uh, warped axle flange may fracture wheel studs in the Ford Transit 2019 version. Ooh, that's not good. So uh, what you need to do is to make sure that your car is on or off of the recall, just to give you some knowledge of what you should or shouldn't do, go to safercar.gov, pull your insurance card out of your wallet, punch in the VIN number that you'll find on there, and then it will take you to look at your car, and it'll tell you if there are any recalls on your car. Well, it, it tells you, is there a recall, and was the recall completed already, or does it still need to be completed? So it's actually pretty good good information on uh, safercars.gov website. I agree, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's good stuff, and I would encourage you to uh, do that. And really, I would also encourage you, whether you hear any of your cars on our recall list or not. Go do but, it anyhow. Yeah. Every, every two or three months when you're on there surfing the web, oh, let's go see if my car is on the recall list. And, and part of that, too, is, you know, all the manufacturers have a responsibility to contact you about a recall. But if you've moved and you haven't left a forwarding address with the manufacturer and your forwarding address uh, notice with the post office has expired, it's going to be hard to find you. Yeah. You know, that was something we ran into all the time was you couldn't find the owners of the vehicles for the recalls. Well, I'll give you a perfect example. Remember when the airbag uh, recall came out? The Takata originally, yep. Yep, the Takata airbag recall. It's and, still uh, going on. And oh, I knew somebody that uh, actually kept getting postcards on the car because that postcard was somehow connected to this address. Address, right. And uh, finally, we tracked this person down and said, hey, man, need to really take the car in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Finally did. And this car was a hoopty deluxe. <laughs> it was trash. It was a beater. What else? Yeah, it was a total beater with pretty much trash in the car. I mean, it was... It looked was a like tr- my trunk. Yeah. Kind of looked like your trunk. <laughs> yeah, no. Junk, junk in the trunk. No, yeah, at, le- exactly. at, le- at least your, your truck uh, was neat in appearance. Okay. So uh, this was not. But by golly, they took it in, and those fine folks there at uh, the Honda dealership, wherever wherever they took it, <clears throat> those fine folks at the dealership, they took it in there and replaced that airbag. Oh, yeah. Now Even though it was a hoopty. This beater of a car has got a brand-new airbag, and usually that meant that that piece cover, of the yeah. dash or the cover of the steering wheel looked brand new again. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But at least we got it fixed. So if you know somebody that uh, is uh, possibly on – any kind of a recall, we need to actually help them out and say, hey, man. Safercars.gov. Safer. S-A-F-E-R. C-A-R. You use hoopty and uh, Is it okay? beater in the same sentence. I did. Yep. Yeah. You, well, can, you can be both. Because, uh, you know, we've all owned, at least I have, owned a hoopty at one time. Oh, and I had a beater. Oh, no, not me. Oh, yeah. The 54 Chevrolet three-quarter ton utility truck that I had was a real beater. And it had, it had rust holes in the cab that were big enough to put legs through. Yeah. 
Dotson B210 with holes in the floor? Probably because it wasn't airtight and watertight. I was uptight and out of sight. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Ready a, to fight. They're ready to fight. You know, I'm a lover, not a fighter. And speaking, speaking of water tight, you know, we had a couple of floods, and we had a problem with water. No, we had I floods. Mean, just here recently, like yesterday, we had some flooding over in the other part of the world in East Texas. And, and uh, so what do you do about it? Well, uh, Jason Law is here. He's with a company called Nothing In. He's the law? Law. Johnny yep. Law. Yep, he is. He, he's been looking for you. That's the reason he was standing around over here. Yeah, I, I got more people than him looking for me, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So he's got uh, he's got something that might help us next time we run into one of those flooding situations. Well, Johnny, it's good to have you here. Thanks so much for uh, Jason. joining us. I'm Jason. Sorry. Did I say Johnny? You said you did. Did I say Johnny? Uh, no, Jason. Uh, you said uh, Jason. Jason. He's yeah. thinking Johnny Law. Uh, oh, That's okay. what it is. So, Jason. Yes, sir. Well, Leave it to me to screw it up right off the bat. No problem. So, Jason, thank you for joining us today. So, right. what is world's first vacuum-sealed car bag? Yes, sir. Why not? And I it, never thought of it. Now, I've seen the ones where you drive in and mm -hmm. you blow it up. Yep. That kind of keeps the water out. But yours is just the opposite. You drive on top of it and you flap it over. Because the problem with our competitors, I mean, they make a good product, right? But you need three people to do it. You can need a guy on the left side, you need a guy on the right side, you need somebody in the car to be able to drive it in. And then on top of that, it, you don't vacuum seal out all of the air. And what happens is when you have 145 mile per hour winds, this five mil to 10 mil tarpaulin material that they use to make their bags is beating the hell out of the cars, right? Yeah, so, never I mean, thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like got little, all that space. Yeah. It's like a flag flapping it's in the breeze. It's sandblasting the thing, yeah. right? And so also the life of the material of a 5 mil and a 10 mil tarp material is not going to last very long, especially not after just Texas one store. Sun either, yeah. Right, and so we purchased some of these uh, bags, and we inspected them very carefully, and uh, I tested every single one of them, and I noticed that they had a lot of flaws. And then the, mo the most... Uh, devastating flaw that I thought was the car floats away. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, you put it in the bag, and in the morning, the car is gone, like it's halfway the, down the, in the middle of the lake kinda somewhere. Kind of like a catalytic converter. Ja boom, there it's, it's gone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, so what we decided, I inspected everything, and I consulted some uh, guys from the Air Force, uh, Special Forces PJs, and I said, uh, I would like to put something together that is 100% waterproof, 100% everything proof, right? Hail proof, sand proof, wind proof, rain, moisture, every single thing proof. And it has to be able to be reused multiple times. And I do not want it to scratch the vehicle. And it has to be able to withstand 300 mile per hour winds without uh, distorting and staying exactly in its shape. So we went through a lot of testing and I inspected a lot of zippers because the zipper was the main problem because the air is always going to leak through the fabric of the zipper. So we had to use a special proprietary zipper that seals behind as the zipper is being zipped the bag up. The zipper will actually seal behind it. So there will be no air leakage or any kind of water can get inside. Cool. Yeah. So it's the number one. I mean, nobody can compete with us. So, you can, so it really, you, when you... Put it in this enclosure. Yep. And then you're you're sucking all the air out. Of but it. you said. All the but, air. but you said. What you, so you, I guess the, the bottom part of it, you drive onto it. Yes, sir. And then you say that you flap over you flap the over. top and then zip it up all the way around. And then how do you suck the air out of it? Uh, in the rear, you're going to see a little vacuum seal port. So you just unscrew that. Put a normal size wet dry vacuum cleaner on it, and eight minutes later, it's completely conformed. So it's like to taking the, the air out of a, a so an air mattress. It's you like it's it like, like sous viding your car. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm thinking about you know the the the, the bag. We, we got the blankets right. and all the or stuff your, your that goes over yeah, yeah. yeah. And I've seen it's it on exactly TV. It. Yeah. It's the same thing as yeah, seen on TV, but it's bigger for a car. Mm -hmm. Exactly. How cool is that? Yeah. Different sizes for different cars? Yes, we have a small. The medium is a full size, like the E-Class size Mercedes or like a Kia yeah. uh, Optima kind yeah. of size car. And then you got the, the large, 
for like the SUVs, the, the SUVs and the Dodge Rams and, or anything with like a lift kit that is aftermarket, we would ask the customer uh, to just at least measure the height because we already know the width and the lengths are right, all pretty right. much universal, yeah. but the, the height can uh, give a discrepancy because you're going to need more fabric. So to these, the these are custom made then? Well, actually, the small, medium, large are going to be pretty much standard. But okay. if you have Off the anything, shelf. Uh, yes, sir. So, like this, this Dodge truck in front of us, this Ram, the mm -hmm. bag is already that shape. Well, actually, it's going to be flat, right? So, as you drive the vehicle on it, you're going to flat uh, flap over another exact identical flat okay. piece, square, right? So, it's going to go on the other side, and then you zip it up from the front all the way around the the right hand side of the vehicle, and it's going to go around the rear, and then on the very back. You're going to see the vacuum seal port, and it's going to be very high quality grade vacuum seal, and it's about the size of a silver dollar. It's, a, it's actually the exact same size as the vacuum. The uh, vacuum nozzle. The nozzle, right. right. So, it's, so it's two piece, a top and a bottom, not, not coming up from the sides. I was thinking you would come up from the side and the zipper would run down the hood across the cab. Oh, yeah. right. No, yeah, no. I don't think you want the zipper coming down the no, hood. Well, I know, but so, I mean, in my mind, that's where I went at first, but it makes a lot more side, sense yeah. to go around the yeah. sides. Well, exactly, it, it's yeah. interesting that you could get a zipper to hold a vacuum. Right. Exactly. That, and I think that's, that's, that's what you were talking about. <laughs> you know, that, you know, because a zipper is, you know, the air is going to pass through it. And but you'll notice, too, at the very end of the zipper, it's got a little handle on the zipper, okay? And as you're pulling it, it's an extremely high-grade zipper, so it actually gets a little bit hot because there's some friction as it's closing it. Now, as it gets to the very end, there's about like two millimeters before it actually closes. At the very end of it, there's like a little teardrop, and you have to pull it into the teardrop. When you do that, it actually, it seals it up. It actually okay. locks it into place, and it will not move, right? Now, as you pull out all the air, you will, you will notice that it's conforming to the vehicle. Yeah. And that is what removes the air from the, uh, of course, it removes the air from the car and it stops its buoyancy so it will not float away. Well, not only that, the flapping from the wind. Absolutely. 300 so miles per hour, we have tested the wind under 300 mile uh, per hour conditions in a controlled environment. And the actual cover does not even move at all. It's no not distortion. distortion at all. Yeah. That's so, really cool. <laughs> yeah. And I'm wondering, so using our Ram truck that's sitting in front of us as uh -huh. an example. Yep. So inside the bed if there's no bed cover on it does does it will dip down it inside down it yeah and the wheel wells does it kind of go up into it'll the go up inside the wheel wells it will conform all to the the shape of the wheels you will know exactly what kind of vehicle it is so you've got a website that you <laughs> show all this as a demonstration on your site uh actually the website was crashed because we we just took a six hundred thousand piece order oh, and oh wow so, yeah six hundred thousand of these six hundred thousand of them congratulations yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. No lie. Well, is that, i mean uh, is that a good thing i mean can you get six hundred thousand made to finish the order well yeah because well, what happened was because we've only been like really in production for six months now you know and so what happened was i started with one factory and then it went a, lot, a month later we were up to three factories and then another Two months later, we were up to like seven factories. Now we're up to 19 factories. Wow. And they've retasked all of their employees just to do this because the orders are coming in so hard. And in Dubai, they have a big problem with sand oh. and dust. Yeah. You think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> it sand blasts the cars. And some they have million-dollar cars yes. out there, you know. And so uh, they did a really big order with us as well, you know. And uh, so are, you, are you going to take those over there yourself? Are you going to hand deliver those? Uh, yeah, we're going to ship uh, great yeah. big yeah. 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 One is to come, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we can I do guess. remote from there for you. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we, we can help. Is yeah. the material inside the cover TPU coated? Different than the outside of the cover? It's the exact material, but it's got a coating inside, so it does not. It does not scratch, scratch the vehicle, okay. yeah. So it's a little softer inside. How much Very does one soft, for, yes. for a medium sized car? It's a four hundred dollars for a medium size, and it, that's all it is. Yes, sir. And the reason why we keep our price point down right now is because this is an emergency situation product, and we want to really distribute it all throughout the entire country uh, relatively very quickly. And then later on, we'll raise the prices. Because can, can I can I put it can I put it on uh, my Corvette in it and set it outside? Absolutely. And, and if you want it because of the heat, we, yeah. we have these are matte black right now, so they are quite hot. Right, it will attract. So is Corvette black. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what yeah. we do is, if you want to 
have something that will keep the car cooler, we will provide you with one that has an ultraviolet inhibitor that is highly reflective. Well, well as an example, his, his Corvette is covered up already. He's got a new cover on it. Uh -huh. So you could technically put your product around Over it that with cover. the cover yeah. so exactly. you can maintain like a double layer or double protection. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the, the other cover kind of protects it from the sun. You know, and for $400? He'll take two. I'm, I'm thinking mm -hmm. that's... Mars? At cheap. I think well, that's I not. That's not outrageously no. different no. to anybody else's car cover. Well, the car exactly. cover is 200 bucks. All right. It depends 200. on the level of cover you well, yeah. Though. He did say it's for emergency purposes in the, in the 300 mile an hour winds, and now that's a hurricane. Yeah. What else costs $400 for a hurricane? A, a generator. So you're going to buy a generator. A 300 no. mile an hour. No. Hurricane. No. Gonna you're not going to buy a generator for $400. Well, yeah, generator for your right. home when the power goes out, if you still have a home. But I'm saying that cost for emergency, it kind of equates it to me. Well, so, so how many times could you reuse it? Smoker. <laughs> uh, we've actually used one in demonstrations 97 times, and it has not one hold or anything problem with it at all. Well, and it's been holding the vacuum seal no problem. See, I'm, I'm kind of wondering. So, What are you wondering, well, Mars? No, I'm wondering, you, see, you see these transports. They've got things on the cars to protect exactly. them. I'm thinking, why don't the OEMs for four hundred dollars for a fifty, sixty thousand dollar car seal it up and then it's you know reusable? Put, That's no, another three hundred thousand order for them. Yeah, there you we go. Just sold three hundred thousand for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll take my commission. Well, Thank you. Uh, <laughs> one of the other things I noticed on here is is bullet one on your on your sheet is yeah. you can use it either sucked down and tight or yeah. you could blow into it and so it you expand. create an expanded bag. That? To you protect you from hail. Yeah, exactly. You can take softball sized hail. You can stand on top of this building and you can throw that as hard as you can down. Use the force of gravity to accelerate it, to help it accelerate. And that thing will just bounce right off because you got like three or four feet of air. Not on my Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> my God, it well, put a hole in it. But, th but that's, the, but he's that's what he's saying is this cover, it. It this the cover energy. will create yeah. so much air gap to the vehicle inside and of it. Not really tight. talk about that, okay? That's dissipating we don't, we don't all the energy. Talk about I think that. we should try yeah. it. Yeah. I think we should hey. try it. Not on my Corvette. Well, but your no, Corvette but I mean the, the, would show up perfectly no. if, it, if it failed. But that's, would a good, absolutely see it. that's a good point. Is there a guarantee or warranty if something like that happens? Yes, we have a two-year warranty on there against just normal storm wear and tear. Okay. Now, we do also tell our customers, like, if, for example, if you have a hurricane, I'm sorry, if you have a tornado, and if you've got a two-by-four that's going 10,000 miles per hour and it hits the yeah. windshield yeah. and it's sticking yeah. out of there. Not going to protect anything. They, you know, we can't protect against something extreme of that what nature is the like name that. of the product it's called nothing in nothing in nothing in i like it because nothing gets in yeah that's, that's great sure. that's real good well the other thing about pulling a vacuum on it you're also extracting the humidity you package exactly. inside right the, the the covering now i will note something that just say like for example you have all these cars inside here underneath the air condition so if if for example if I had one of the bags on one of these cars, and if I took the car outside in the bag into the warm, naturally, just from the process of condensation, of condensation ambient it, air, it will start to condensate yeah, inside. So oh, we well, give yeah, you two yeah, desiccant yeah. sacks, how, how, but you it, just put that in, and it resolves that issue. Can you do that? I mean, if you bag it, desiccant sacks will be underneath, term. under the undercarriage. It'll yeah. just be sitting right in there. No problem. So you have no, one of these on display it, at your booth? Say again. Can you move it? How, how would you, if you drive the car up on, and I'm trying to visualize this, you drive it up on the piece, and you put the top half on there, you zip it up, and you vacuum it. Well, you'd put the desk and sacks in first okay. before, before you vacuum it. Okay. The little okay. squares about just that yeah, big, yeah, you yeah. just toss okay. them in there. Well, I'm just wondering how you would move the vehicle once you got it bagged. You, on uh, a flatbed trailer. You'd have to put the bag <laughs> On the flat bag right. and then drive okay. the car okay. on the flat bag. Yeah, because yeah. it's yeah. not going to roll. It's the tires. Okay. Jason, thanks so much yeah. for stopping by. Very We're much really sure. Great idea. Very informative. Great idea. Yeah, where website? Are you website? Yes, it's nothingin.com. It's, it's under actual construction right now. So they as crashed. soon as we get it back. Yeah. yeah, they crashed it. So as soon as we get it back up. And your display is here? Yes, sir. It's right around the corner right here. You guys can see it. You can kind pull on it. You can tug right on it. Right over here by uh, the classic car uh, corral thing. Yeah, do you know where the Jeep uh Right. Uh, the little, uh, Camp Jeep. Yeah, the little thing over right. there. We're like right in front of it, right on the Perfect. side. Yeah. Awesome. Great yeah, to talk to you. Can... Thanks so much for stopping by. We appreciate you. You're sure. on the In the Wheel Time Car Show. Thanks so much for joining us today. Coming to you today from the Houston Auto Show. We'll be right back after this quick break. 
Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise-in, and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, June 19th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free, and everyone is invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard just south of I-10 in Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Loopy founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in, Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, June 19th, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy. The in wheel time car show will be there too. Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday morning, June 19th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy. Inside the Loop, visit Tailpipes and Tacos on the Southwest Freeway at Shepherd, weather permitting. And HRA Camping World Drag Racing. It's an 11,000 horsepower Nitro Rodeo coming to Houston Raceway Park in Baytown. Catch all the Nitro and Pro Stock action at the Mopar Express Lane. NHRA Spring Nationals presented by Pennzoil this weekend. Matt Hagen, Leah Pruitt, Erica Enders, three-time world champ Steve Thorns, and 16-time himself John Force. Kids 12 and under are free in general admission. Get tickets at HoustonRaceway.com. Houston's got horsepower. Don't miss the first ever Houston Summer Auto Show, May 19th through the 23rd at NRG Center. A limited edition collection of your favorite brands and models, including the new Ford Bronco and Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Tickets online only at HoustonAutoShow.com. Coming to you from the Houston Summer Auto Show, this is the award-winning car talk show in real time. Just ahead, more guests from this year's new car show. We'll review our featured car of the week. I think Mr. Mars has got the Ford Ranger coming up. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, we've got your weekly cruising calendar, Conrad, uh, auto history. I mean, it's a whole myriad of car things. You would call on it action-packed. It's an action-packed last hour of our show. We thank you for joining us today. Along with Mr. Michael Mars... That's Mr. Out of This World Mars. <laughs> king Conrad DeLong. The King. Jeffrey Zekin, photo bomber. <laughs> and over here, ladies and gentlemen, is David. Mm. Mm. No, further out. There you, go. there you go. Mr. Transmission Man. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us. Did he call today. you a trans? What, what? Yeah. David, David's our training. He's the transmission man. <laughs> trans, you can, you trans, can call him whatever you want something. to. Trans something. Uh, we're so glad that you could join us today, and uh, I want to remind everybody that we are going to be uh, at the Houston Raceway Park for the NHRA Spring Nationals. Now, uh, we are recording this show, so if you're listening to us, you have to kind of put it all together. We're recording this show on a Friday, mm -hmm. and uh, NHRA has canceled today's one qualifying session, yeah, along with the sportsman class of cars, because of the bad weather that we've had here. But tomorrow, there will be two rounds of qualifying if the weather holds out there. Um, and uh, there's two rounds of qualifying tomorrow, Saturday, at Houston Raceway Park in the NHRA Spring Nationals. And then Sunday is final eliminations. And, uh, weather on Sunday is supposed to be fabulous. So uh, fabulous. fabulous. Simply fabulous. Here, let me put fabulous. it. Let me put it the right way. It's going to be fabulous out there. <laughs> is okay. that is that okay for yeah. you guys? That, that Much works. better. Yep. Much yeah, better. That's it. what I thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I assume that this is our Ram truck guy. This is Sergio Armenta. Uh, How you doing, Sergio Armenta? Is that is correct? That, right? that is correct. Close enough. That's close enough. All right. I work with a Sergio. <laughs> Armenta. Okay, Armenta. Not, not Armento. No, Armenta. Ar Armenta. <laughs> Very nice. Cool. So Sergio has got probably the greatest job known to man. Yeah. <laughs> he gets to drive Ram trucks all day. So what are we calling the Ram drive event here? Uh, right behind us, we have a Ram truck territory. Ram and, uh, truck uh, territory. territory. Ram truck territory. RTT. That is correct, RTT. Okay. So tell us about this. Is it similar to Camp Jeep? That is correct. Similar to Camp Jeep. It's free for the entire family. 
they come in, they reg register, and um, you know we're showcasing. Uh, we have the torque wall, torque climb over here. That's new this year. You have the what? Torque climb. Torque climb. Torque climb. Correct. Mm -hmm. We have a nice steep hill over there. They yep. can take the Rebel, the Power Wagon. It's actually 75th anniversary for the Power Wagon. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. So they'll be they'll be climbing up steep angles, um, and then we have professional drivers. You know, uh, showing them all the new features of the Ram trucks. So um, we got product specialists. Correct. For each of the vehicles. Exactly. Right. Uh huh. So, so it's not just ram trucks it is just ram it trucks. Is it just is ram just trucks. ram trucks just ram trucks correct that ram a full truck range of ram trucks you got diesels over there too we do we have a beautiful 2500 limited um diesel and uh with cummins turbo diesel we have uh the dually doing all the hard lifting over there yeah you know it uh, wins uh best in class at thirty-seven thousand one hundred pounds oh my god <laughs> thirty-seven thousand thirty-seven thousand i'm going pounds. to get up and i'm going to take a gander <laughs> over here because i haven't had a chance to do that gander and then there we also have the rebel the power wagon and then the beautiful ram 1500s um you know we have the foundation of everything ram the 1500 <laughs> that's what we sell so and then not to mention guys we brought the all new uh, 2021 TRX uh, with six. It's a, it has a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 with 702 horsepower and 650 pound feet of torque. Now, is that in it, the drive? It's not in the drive, but we do have it on display over here. Yeah. Well, I yeah. understand why you wouldn't put it in the drive. <laughs> well, I mean, because you, you really couldn't show it off any any different than what any of the other vehicles. There's no way you'd show the not, capabilities. The full capability. That is correct. Yeah, so you'd I'm have to have a track outside at the minimum for that. Exactly. I want to know what this great big weight gadget is that you've got over there. That right there is uh, they're, they're, they're doing a uh, pull right there with the dually, and it's about uh, uh, 15,000 pounds that they're pulling up. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. And it's, it's really a cool contraption. It looks like it came out of some factory over there well, well, the <laughs> with pulleys, the great yeah. big pulley wheels up there and big cable. and That's lifts the leverage. Up up. The pulleys are the yeah, leverage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And so, so that's a, just to show the towing a, capacity. There's towing also capacity, a hill climb over there, too. Yep, we got a hill climb over there. Um, and then, uh, you know, we actually, to show off the 98.5% uh, steel frame on that dually, um, you know, we try to uh, tweak that frame, but we actually show you over there. You see the tires get coming up off the ground and uh, trying to tweak that frame, but you can't. You can actually still open the doors, you know, when you when you get it up over our moguls out back there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, do you live at South Padre Island? <laughs> no, that's that's Benny. <laughs> ben, we know Benny. Everyone says yeah. we look like brothers, but no, I'm actually from Utah. You're from Utah? <laughs> yep, I'm a Utanian. <laughs> okay. Is that what they call them as Utanians? Utanians. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty weird. Never I've never heard, heard that heard. before. <laughs> are, you, are you near Salt Lake? About 30 minutes south in Lehigh. Yeah. Where? Le Lehigh, Utah. Lehigh, Utah. So right. do you know the Kendigget boys out there? Um, no, I don't know him personally. But you watch the show I like the rest the of yeah. us. That's great. Not too far from me, yep. Yep, very nice. All right, so let's get back to the trucks. We've got all of these different models of trucks. you got half ton. Do you have three-quarter ton over there? Three-quarter ton, one ton, correct. Yep, wow. So you got the full range of uh, everyday trucks that people buy over there and different trim levels, uh, I assume, as well. Exactly. Do you have a work truck over there? We do not have a work truck. We do have one over here on the showroom floor, though. Yeah. And uh, we have uh, product specialists as well, you know, that uh, can go through all the features and uh, get you in touch with your local dealers. Can I just tell you, and I, I, I know this is going to sound crazy, <laughs> say but it. the interior of these trucks is really top notch. It is. It is. Compared to everybody else's truck, and I worked 25 years for General Motors, <laughs> and there's nothing better than the interior of a Ram truck, whether it's at the half ton or at the three-quarter, one-ton level. And, and it's yep. really made the others step up. Well, I mean, it made Ford step up. GM's interior well, still, GM. still lacks. Um, <laughs> yeah, but Ford definitely it stepped th up their game. I think they can hear you over there. But that's why I said it that loud, because I know a couple of people that are over there. Oh, I see. Just to kind of <laughs> dig annoying, it in just a little just bit more. Mm -hmm. No, but the interior of the Ram truck. And then the 12-inch screen 
is uh, is pretty impressive. So how many comments do you get from people that for the first time they sit in a Ram and they see that oh iPad size screen? You know, they're like, well, what is this? Are we taking off to the moon or something? You know, <laughs> like an airplane. <laughs> exactly, like an airplane. So do you, I mean, your product specialist, do they know how to actually display, show how the display works? Oh, yes, yes. And they're, yeah. I mean, you couldn't do it in five, ten minutes. You know what I mean? You, you need a good amount of time to go through to learn that. It. To learn it. There's just so many great features on right. there. Um, all the 360-degree cameras, front cameras, the rear cameras, on the, the digital uh, uh, rear-view mirror camera. I mean, you, you, there's so much to see. Do you now. have a TRX over there? We, we have one on display. No, right I know there. that. Not on the track, though. Dang like, it. Yeah, like we said, we wouldn't be able to show the full <laughs> capability. But uh, hopefully soon. Hopefully yeah, you soon. You mean the full capability of burning all four <laughs> tires off of it? Exactly. Well, and then also in the TRX is the competition pages. Yep. Um, you know, which is over and above what the other Rams have. And that's I think that's part of any of the, the, the uh, well, Stellantis products Stellantis. that come yeah, the, with the, the, the SRT That come with the SRT. Yeah. Or the Correct. Hellcats. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. Similar like you'd see like in the SRT chargers and all that. Yep. You know, pretty pretty cool that you can go in and dial all that oh, yeah. different features into your driving style. Exactly, exactly. So what are, the, what are the questions that people typically ask you about the trucks? <sighs> can I have it? Yeah, can I have it? Besides that, because <laughs> they, they can would, have it. They wouldn't be there driving it if they weren't really interested in it. <clears throat> what, what, are, what are probably some of the most common questions that you get asked? Mostly, it's like we can't believe, you know, how beautiful the truck is inside and out, and all the capabilities. I mean, like, what what can it not do? You know what right. I mean? And I mean, that's we're there everywhere: price range, styling, uh, quality. Do you, uh, do you know uh, if some of the drivers that you have, or do you ask them if they currently have a truck? And if so, what kind of truck do they have? Oh, yeah. We have drivers out there. They, uh, you know, one of my drivers, uh, Cody. No, no, not them, but oh, the, 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 the actual people that come up. The, to yep, yeah, the, yep. We have, I mean, we've sold so many trucks through Ram Truck Territory. You hear it all the time. Hey, I came last year, and because of this, we went out to our local dealer, that's uh, cool. Took advantage yeah. of the great incentives and then, you know, and bought the truck that we actually rode in. Are there any See, incentives? I was going to ask the same thing. <laughs> I don't think there are any incentives left, are there? Yeah, there's still a few out well, there. Well, the, the only reason I, I say that is because, I mean, inventory, with, with yeah. the yeah, inventory uh, being tight, to say the least, it, if not diminished, that uh, a lot of the manufacturers are going, whoa, hey, hang on here. we got to have some inventory left. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, I guess that would be uh, through Stellantis and, and your dealer yeah, to find that Yeah, that'd be through your dealer, yep. Yeah. Yeah. yep. I was but talking about the previous years we've come, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Taking advantage of all the, the current incentives at that time. But that's the great thing about coming to, to the Houston Auto Show. You can come out here and you can see the half-ton, three-quarter, whatever. A lot of people, you know, they've got some RV sitting back over here in the corner. Well, how big a truck do I need for that RV? Well, I need a three-quarter ton. Well, never had one. Well, yep. let me go over here and let me, go let me take a ride. ride yep. Let me and take see a ride. What it's like. See how you it know? actually feels to hook it up and feel that that you know. Well, that, I that think even more importantly than that is, there's General Motors and Chevrolet trucks here, and there are also Ford trucks. Yeah, here. Ford is yep. just beyond this. Uh, and, and so, th the bottom line is, is that you can compare in one open space okay. within a couple of hundred yards of each other all the competitors. Yeah, and they have the Toyota and Nissan, but. In the real world of trucking, um, the, everybody's going to want a chance to sit inside of all five of them. Go for it. And then, but what? the only chance they get to drive one or to well, ride, ride, in, one ride in one is going to be here. It's going to be here at Ram Truck Territory. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it, it's very impressive, and uh, it takes up a lot of floor space over here. It does. And uh, this year we integrated actually, you know, the dirt. You know, we usually don't bring. Uh, uh, the material. Did in. you bring in dirt? We did. We brought in dirt <laughs> from, from South real logs. Yes, yeah, from South Padre. Yeah. <laughs> They're the ocean somewhere. But, you yeah. know, it's more like clay, but it's fun. The people are loving it. They're having a good time, getting a lot of rewrites. So, and and uh, just for those people that uh, are worried about the COVID protocols, that you sanitize the inside of the vehicles after every run. After every run, they're being sanitized. That yeah. is correct. Yeah. So that make feel comfortable about getting in there with other people. Um, and uh, it's a free deal. Once you pay your ticket to get in, come on over, huh? Exactly. Yep. Free deal. You just got to be 44 inches or taller. Oh, boy. And uh, ride right in. 
not a problem. You must really. be this tall to ride this ride. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, listen, it's great to talk to you. Thanks so much for uh, stopping by. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. your time. Thank you. Get to learn about uh, the Ram Truck Territory right next to G Camp Jeep. Camp Jeep, correct. Yep. And uh, it's all here at the Houston Auto so Show. Uh, Sergio Armenta. We appreciate you stopping by, my friend. I appreciate you guys. Hope Thank to see you. you next year. Yes. Thank you. Hopefully, well, next yeah. year has come quicker this year. January, yeah, that's yeah, right. January yeah. yeah. is going to come and, back real quick. And, and you're off to where now? Uh, Your next gig? Hopefully Chicago. Okay. Yeah, hopefully Chicago. Okay. So. so I have to ask you before you leave, do they pack all this up in 18 wheelers, <laughs> yeah. inclu including the trucks? All the trucks, that is correct. All the trucks and all of the, the display, the everything. Track and display. That is correct. So these will be the same trucks that will be in Chicago? Not not these ones. Oh, okay. Yep, but the ones, the ones that you're track. actually driving. Yep, yep, these are, yep, these are Believe it or not, we pack all this up in a Yugo. <laughs> in a Yugo. <laughs> well, this is kind of like a big rock concert yeah. where, you know, they bring in 18 wheelers full of, you know, uh, all, stuff. all the stuff that you need for your and rock concert. It, so this is your version of a rock concert. Do you exactly. do the tear down yourself or you've got folks that do it? Yep. Well, we, we we have a crew that does it, you know, at every city. That's what we need. Yep. We need a crew, David. Da David is the <laughs> David crew. David is the crew. <laughs> we have a crew. <laughs> and then and then I walk in at about 30 <laughs> seconds before the show goes on the air, and you guys still don't have it set up right, <laughs> and uh, we just go on the air anyway. Hey, it works. Just saying. <laughs> Sir Joe, thank you. Thank you, guys. Have thank a good you day. very Pre much. Do we have the uh, cruising calendar? Do you sure. Have do you want to do that? Because I, I know that we're running behind, and we're really kind of off format for this show, but I don't care. Well, you know, all of that is the cruise-ins are all kind of weather-dependent at this point. Uh, typically on a Friday night, there's going to be uh, at Freddy's on uh, North Kirkendall and 2920. Don't know if that's going to happen just because of the weather. Uh, and then tomorrow night would be Nifty 50s up at Grogan's Mill in the Woodlands. The Kima Car Meet is every Saturday night. Uh, and then Thursday, uh, May the 27th, at Rudy's Barbecue Meet in Tomball with Speed Advocates, uh, that they're going to have their meet there. And then don't forget, May 29th uh, is a, a Gulf Coast Racing Series out at Houston Motorsports Park. It's, uh, what, $10 tickets, dollar beer, dollar hot dogs. What a what a great family event that would be. It is, and it's going to be a Memorial Day weekend. Yep. And, um, Are you going to be it, announcing? I don't think so. I think I'm going to uh, take advantage of our very rare Saturday off. This show actually is going to be running uh, next Saturday, not tomorrow, but a week tomorrow. Tomorrow's live. Yes, tomorrow's live. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe going out of town going on a cruise and okay. uh, gina if you're listening i haven't told you yet so oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. you're gonna have to find somebody By else to be here and then uh, friday night at valley ranch uh valley ranch boulevard in new caney which is kind of where uh 99 and 59 come together in the northeast corner they have a real nice meet there and then on th uh, the 30th cars and burgers at beyond burger in texas city uh sunday june 6th car 6th Cars and Cocktails at 5334 Washington Avenue in Houston. Did you just <laughs> he's did drinking. You stick up? He's Drink, drinking. I just, again. I just hiccup. Hiccup. Uh, and then uh, June 13th um, at Bayway Chevrolet, their first annual car show, and that's going to be a By Sunday. By the way, I wanted to talk to you about from that. From 2 to 6. I, that should I, be pretty I'm cool. going to uh, commit and go down there. Uh, with the Corvette, will you come out there with the uh, with the old? Really? Uh, yeah. Let me let me work on getting that. No, you need to say yes. I I need it'll, to get the switch fixed. And that's, a, I need to get the switch fixed. It'll be on a flatbed. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get the switch fixed. So get the switch fixed and be down there. It's got three weeks. Switch it up. It'd, it'd be a cool show. And then uh, he still hasn't committed. <laughs> no, well he did. He <laughs> Saturday, June nineteenth is the charity car show benefiting uh, uh, some of the local baseball teams that community baseball teams at 5118 Telephone Road in Houston, and that's from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Can I add something to that real quick? The Please. 27th and Thursday is my birthday, so send a nice gift. And Sunday the 30th, we've got a gig down at the Huli Huli Hut in Galveston So do you 3 want to 7. The Huli Huli Hut? The Huli Huli Hut in Galveston will be there 3 to 7. It's on Sunday. On a Sunday. So come on out, listen to some good music, eat the food. So do you want to give out your cash app handle so people can send you a cash <laughs> gift for they your can, birthday? They can, sure. Absolutely. Just send it to In Wheel Time. 
Baloney. No, he's not. he's getting the cash. No, uh, hello. <laughs> Me. Hey, it took, him a, that out there. took him a minute I to know. figure that Wait out. Wait a minute. Need more Jeff. <laughs> um, Mr. Mars, uh, yes, why, don't we get, why don't we get your car review uh, in here? I don't know that I can follow all this. No. Well, you really can't but in the way that you need to follow it, but let's try. Let's, let's, let's talk about the 2021 Ford Ranger Lariat with a trimmer package. This is the new trimmer trim level that they've got Spell coming tremor. out. Spell tremor. T-R-E-M-O-R. Tremor. Okay. Tremor. Tremor. Okay. Tremor. No, okay. Tremor. Go tremor. ahead. Tremor. Tremor. Yes. Whatever. Tremor. Like vibrating. Anyway, so, so, I mean, if you think about it, the, the Ranger has been reissued. It came out by reestablished, whatever you want to call it. It's really only about two years old. And uh, it is a midsize pickup. It's kind of joining into that. It's not a strunk or a smaller F-150 by any means. There's only two cabs to choose from. There's only two beds to choose from. And um, it's got its own unique set up so it don't it's just not an f-150 and we happen to have a new color that's available this year called cyber orange very bright orange so for the ford ranger it had the hex hexagonal grill slanted headlights and stuff and that's really that's what distinguishes it away from the f-150 hexagonal hexagonal hexagonal, hexagonal. 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 Exactly. hexagonal. Anyway, it has the Spell LED it. headlights, the fog lights, you the say tail tomato, lights. I you say tomato, I say tomato. And he one of the other things hexagonal. it's got is, the, <laughs> I'm not going to stop. <laughs> one of the other things it's got is the wheel lip moldings because this is the uh, off-road package that comes with it. So obviously you're going to get skid plates underneath. The trimmer is with, the off-road package. It right. is, yes. Okay. And the Fox shocks, it's got the tow hooks on it. It's got some 17-inch aluminum wheels that are only available on that package. So level. pretty well-prepped off-road package. It is. That's exactly what it's set up for. But because it's Lariat, you get into the inside of it, and you've got the leather seating surfaces. The front seats are heated. They recline. Nice. Driver and passenger both recline. You've got a lot of storage with map pockets, under-seat storage areas. It does have the 8-inch touchscreen, and that's where you're going to find your rear camera, your Sync 3 uh, systems for all your convenience controls. And uh, this thing even comes with a rear window defroster, which I thought was kind of cool in a smaller truck like that. And it does have the Bang Olufsen 10-speaker audio system in it. All right. That's the B&O. The B&O. It's a railroad. The Under the hood, it's got a 2.3-liter engine. Now, you're going to find this engine, that size engine, is going to be in several different vehicles inside the Ford lineup. This one comes with 270 horsepower. 310 pound-feet of torque, and it's backed by a 10-speed automatic. Now, properly equipped, this vehicle will tow up to 7,500 pounds, which is a pretty good load for That's a vehicle of this size. That's pretty good for a size. truck, yeah. Yes. Uh, and because it is the trimmer, it does it is all-wheel drive, so the EPA says you should get about 21 in the city, about 24 out on the highway. Um, it's also, in, and because it does have all the Fox suspension components on it, it's about an inch, almost an inch taller. It's got 32-inch tires on it. So you end up with this very firm ride. And it's not harsh by any means, but it is firm. But it's very comfortable out on the highway at cruising speed once you kind of get some air underneath it. And then, uh, so if you're really looking for something. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Get, get some, get air, some under air underneath it. Well, you get a little speed up and you get a little, oh little, 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 little air under it. And it Hello, Ford. Are you listening to this? <laughs> 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 and, it, and it runs really cool. He's, He's right putting air underneath it, That's ladies what an off road package is designed to do. Go no off road. Kind, so, of, kind of like the guy that did that with the TRX. No, 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 no. And got arrested or something. Or the old Corvette commercial with the kid flying through the city. Yeah. Anyway, go somebody. ahead. Sorry. So if you're looking for something <laughs> to compare this to inside in that mid-size caliber, you're going to look at the Chevy Colorado ZR2, which is their off-road package. The crew cab in that line starts about 44,200. Well, uh, you might look over at a Jeep Gladiator. The Mojave starts at 44,300. A Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro, which is their off-road that's very popular, 44,325. Now, this was a, a pre-production vehicle, so I didn't get the MSRP, but it appears that a base Ranger is 24820 I got that off the Ford site. Good luck in finding one of those. Yes. And if you get the Lariat Ranger, starts at 39675 and then you add the trimmer package on that, which is about a $4,200 package, which puts it up there in that $46,000 range, much like the competitors in that same midsize off-road category from the factory. Yep. And I mean, I drove that's it. right up there with a regular half-ton pickup truck. Nah. You realize that? Yeah, it's a half little tons, under it. Half-tons are way over 50 right yeah, now. Yeah, really it is. And, and Unless again, you get a stripper. 
So yep. it, it fills a gap in there, and apparently it's filling a pretty popular gap because they keep coming more and more people coming into that segment. Yep. You know, it started out with just one or two with the Chevrolets, and then they kind of reestablished it. Well, just it. wait till the super compact pickup trucks start hitting the I, road. Yeah, I hear there, rumors. It's, it's, in the, it's in the works. I'm it, telling you, it's you right around rumors. the corner. After the super, there's going to be the super duper. Yeah. The pooper scooper. Mm. But anyway, very nice running the vehicle out on the highway. Well, speaking of Fords, I've got some Fard news. They're right over Fard there, by the way. Ford Motor Company will temporarily reduce output of the nation's best-selling vehicle, the F-150 pickup, at its Dearborn truck plant just days after President Joe Biden is expected to visit a new electric vehicle center nearby as the semiconductor shortage continues to impact production. The plant will fall into one shift from three the week of May 24th. As a result of the worsening chip shortage, Ford's other F-150 plant, Kansas City Assembly, will be completely Shut idled down. that week. Uh, so additionally, Ford will work, idle man. its Louisville Assembly plant, which builds the Escape and the Lincoln Corsair crossovers the week of May 24th. Automaker expects the next few months to be the most difficult since the chip shortage began. It expects to lose $2.5 billion. Yes. And 1.1 million units of production in 2021 never amid recover. what CEO Jim Farley has called the greatest supply shock he has experienced. Mm. Dealers are struggling to keep their lots filled as inventory dwindles. Keep telling you, if you're in the market for a car, Go now's get it now. the time to get They're it. They're running yep. low. And you yep. come down here and Matter you can fact, check them out. We heard, rumor has it, that there are some dealers that... If you want to buy a new car, they have some new cars, but you have to trade in your used vehicle. Yep. You can't be selling it outright because they have trouble getting used, used vehicles. Cars as well, right. Because now the rental firms, Hertz, Avis, or Enterprise, out they're out of cars and they're now buying used vehicles. And, so, and the used car market's not being supplemented by the turnover at the rental fleets. You know, it used to be the rental fleets would buy new cars three times a year. <laughs> so that would feed the used car inventory. Absolutely, yeah. So that turnover isn't happening. And used car values are going up, so it's a good time to trade in. Yep. And facing, facing pressure from new rivals trying to stake a claim in the burgeoning battery electric pickup market, Ford Motor Company designed the 2022 F-150 Lightning to do what its gasoline-powered counterpart has done for decades, outwork and outsell, outsell all competitors. Ford's hoping, obviously written by somebody in the marketing department, Ford is holding, hoping that a bold starting price of $39,974 will check the check mark on the box before shipping, will help win over EV skeptics. Hello? <laughs> He's not a, that, and expand skeptic down here. <laughs> and expand the pool of buyers who have made the F-150 the nation's best-selling vehicle. It'll be assembled at the Rouge Electric Vehicle Center, I guess to the Rouge River plant next yep. to it, uh, with sales scheduled to begin next spring. Ford said the EV can outrun a Raptor with a targeted 0-60 to 60 time in mid-four-second range, and its dual electric motors are expected to produce, produce 563 horsepower, 775 pound-feet of torque, uh, but it will only go 10 miles. No, I just made that part <laughs> up. <laughs> so they're going I'm still to still sticking price, with the range anxiety thing. They're going to price the Lightning, the 2022 Lightning, cheaper than an XLT pickup truck. But you got to remember, this is not... A lightning, like you think about of a lightning from days gone by, where it was yeah. their hot rod truck. Yeah, they're this just is using just their well, EV truck. This, you don't think 500 horsepower and 700 no, foot pounds but, of but torque no, but is I mean, a hot rod truck? I'm not saying it, it it won't perform. Don't get me wrong, but the lightning was considered. It was their. It was a performance truck designed specifically to be a performance vehicle. This isn't. This is an EV. We'll yeah. talk more about EVs yeah. with just a Buzz sitting right down Stay there tuned. in just a he second. He can tell us the buzz. Thank you for joining us today here on the In Wheel Time Car Show. Back in a flash. Whether you own a newer car or want to keep your older one humming along for a while longer, think of Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Bayway Chevy, and Bayway Lincoln to keep things in tip-top shape. 
From oil changes to major repairs, you can depend on the highly skilled service pros at Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Bayway Chevrolet, and Bayway Lincoln to perform fast, efficient service to keep your investment running strong. For all your service needs, remember Bayway. Schedule your next appointment online anytime. Bayway, keeping it original. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise-in, and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, June 19th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free, and everyone is invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event at the Lupi Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard just south of I-10 in Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Lupi founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in, Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, June 19th, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Lupi's in Katy. The In Wheel Time Car Show will be there too. Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday morning, June 19th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Lupi's in Katy. Inside the Loop, visit Tailpipes and Tacos on the Southwest Freeway at Shepherd, weather permitting. NHRA Camping World Drag Racing. It's an 11,000 horsepower Nitro Rodeo coming to Houston Raceway Park in Baytown. Catch all the Nitro and Pro Stock action at the Mopar Express Lane. NHRA Spring Nationals presented by Pennzoil this weekend. Matt Hagen, Leah Pruitt, Erica Enders, three-time world champ Steve Dorrance, and 16-time himself John Force. Kids 12 and under are free in general admission. Get tickets at HoustonRaceway.com. Houston's got horsepower. Don't miss the first ever Houston Summer Auto Show, May 19th through the 23rd at NRG Center. A limited edition collection of your favorite brands and models, including the new Ford Bronco and Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Tickets online only at HoustonAutoShow.com. Celebrating 10 years of award-winning car talk, it's the In Wheel Time Car Show, your weekly go-to all things automotive place. Today, coming to you from the Houston Summer Auto Show at NRG Center. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. King Conrad DeLong, Jeffrey Zekin back in the corner. Woo-hoo. Chief Engineer, Transmission Man, David mm. Ainsley. I'm Don Armstrong. Thanks for joining us today. And joining us now in oh. the remote studio is the man himself. You know, we don't get to see him in person very often. Not very often. We talk to him uh, on Zoom calls. But ladies and gentlemen, joining us now in the glittery red jacket. This is an electric segment. Ri- ri- Richard Buzz Smith, the evangelist, or evangelist, evangelist, as we like to call him. Buzz, it's good to see you, man. Same here, but I'm glad to see you guys in person again. <laughs> yeah, so now we can harass you in live. <laughs> I'm ready. I know, I'm ready. I know you always are. Especially so, after last night's news, or night before last. That F-150 Lightning, I, I've said for a while now, pickup trucks were the tipping point. You know, 60% of all new vehicles sold in the western U.S. are going to be pickup trucks. And 90% here in Texas. Oh, yeah. Exactly. That That's coming out. The Hummer's coming out this year. The Cybertruck's coming out this year. The Rivian? Rivian early next year. This is the tipping point, guys. And, and you know, you had this tailpipes and tacos. What are they going to call it? There's no more tailpipe in the very near future. This is going to be huge. It will be easy, a, easy. the plug and taco. <laughs> Don't just, forget the lyrics. Just tacos, show. just breakfast tacos. The Cadillac Lyric, Tron. Yeah, the Cadillac Lyrics are really interesting. And the Volkswagen ID4 is here at the show. And I got to drive one for about an hour the other day. That is an astounding EV. But did it run out of fuel? That's why you only drove you it always, for an hour. You <laughs> always hit that. I've never run out of fuel ever. <laughs> Can you take it on the Jeep track? Will they let you do that? No. No, they're not. But, you know, even Jeep has announced that they're, they're going to come out with an EV. It's, well, right, it's the, a white one right behind right you. Behind they, you. They, they have one on the track. No way. Yeah, they have electric. They have no way. All, an electric. That's what he said. It was it's, a, e. it's a hybrid electric. It's a hybrid. Oh, okay. So there, okay. there is an ice to it. But right. here he says it'll drive all day on the electric. Excellent. And you can drive. By the way, if you're thinking about coming to the auto show, they have a Ford Mustang Mach-E in the ride and drive area. So you can come here, get in line, and you can go drive a Mach-E today. Well, I have to tell you that unless somebody in the press corps wrecks it, I have a Mach-E coming for a test drive in the next month. 
and, I will and drive he's back down to Houston it. to play with Ooh. that. I want to be in the car when you drive that. Yeah, well, <laughs> you just keep on dreaming. Make it, make <laughs> it drive it up to you, up to Dallas. Drive it yeah, up to Dallas. Yeah, drive it up, up to Dallas, Tom. Go up and meet Buzz for lunch. That's what we'll do. We'll meet halfway. Yes. Just in time for a charge. Yeah. Sam's in Fairfield. Oh, my aching rear end. <laughs> <laughs> you can meet in Buffalo. We'll it's meet in Buffalo. Halfway. Yeah. Is, it, is it easy to push an electric car? I mean, when you run No, it, it's <laughs> heavy. Uh, but, uh, Talk about can he- you see the abuse I take here? <laughs> Talk about heavy cars. Did you hear they announced the weight of the Hummer EV? 9,000 no. pounds. What? Now, not only that, 9,000 pounds, but it'll go 0 to 60 in three seconds. We're talking C8 Corvette speed. You're going to move 9,000 pounds to 60 miles an hour in three but seconds. But how long does the charge yeah, last? Something. Yeah, three miles. Three miles and you – no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> See, we even but got you get there really quick. Now. Yeah, you get there really quick. Now, I think it's uh, – at the high end, they're going to have almost 400 miles range. Right. So, it's – it's like the, I said, all of these trucks are, are – the tipping point but the, for this but country. the Hummer is well over a hundred thousand dollars. The the, the top first one tier is. one. Yeah. yeah, they're only making the high end ones in the beginning. The the lower end ones will be eighty thousand dollars. But again, that Ford at under forty thousand dollars with the seven thousand five hundred dollar income tax credit, you're talking he, about a thirty two thousand five hundred dollar truck. He's going to buy one immediately. No, well, I'm, no, I'm no not he's not going to buy guy. one. He's going to go to work at a Ford store so he can get one for free. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hmm. And he's going to yeah. wear that jacket. Things that make you go, hmm. Yeah, that might happen. Now so he, let's get serious for a minute. Let's talk about the Houston Auto Show and what you've got going on here. you got your own thing down there. Well, it's not mine. It's actually Evolve Houston, which is a uh, public and private consortium that is pushing for Houston to lead the nation in electric vehicle adoption. They're looking for 30% of all new vehicles to be electric by 2030. I think, actually, it's going to happen a lot faster than that. But you know me. I'm an electric optimist. The, uh, the show this year, we've got a Porsche Taycan. We've got a Mustang Mach-E, a Volkswagen ID.4. We've got the, uh, the new Audi e-tron. It's the GT, not the SUV this time. And we've got uh, some fleet vehicles. We've got a couple of Bolt EV fleet vehicles, a Leaf, and a... Um, All in your display down there? Yeah, there's eight EVs down there. I, re- I remember not that long ago, just a couple of years ago, there was nothing in there except you and a display <laughs> behind you that the uh, poster boards. The wow. world the world is changing who quickly. Is, who is making that mandate of that time frame? Is it the state well, for Texas? Or that really is, that, is that an objective, an objective from Evolve? Yeah. yeah, that's just an objective that they've come up with. It's, it's a goal. Um, City of Houston's okay. one of them. University of Houston's okay. doing some research. So, gotcha. Uh, but it, a lot of it is electric utility companies. Imagine that. <laughs> you know, follow the money. Hmm. But, you know, Centerpoint, NRG. Duracell. Uh, <laughs> you know, they obviously want electric vehicle adoption as well. So I also heard uh, we had uh, one of the Ford guys on, the Ford fleet guys, and Ford has announced an all-electric transit van. Yes. They're, they're full-size, big, Amazon-level yeah. transit van, all EV. And, you know, my wife and I, we really want our next EV to enable us to do camping. She's a professional video editor. We want to take the video editing studio on the road with us. And that transit, all electric, that That's could be, be cool. a phenomenal vehicle to do something like that. Um, the canoe delivery vehicle is similar in form factor, and they've got a version of that called the adventure vehicle that looks like something right out of Mad Max. But even the Volkswagen ID Buzz, which is the old hippie bus from yeah. the 60s, modernized for I electric. I resemble that remark. Grateful <laughs> Dead. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, all of those cars are on my short list because I'm really interested in Buzz, doing a lot more camping. I have something that I wanted to show you. I'm sure. Uh oh. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know. On. Can you turn this camera on? Absolutely. Let, let me show. Uh, let me show our, our viewers at home uh, what I got. Snapshot that and get the number. Oh, an EV go kart. <laughs> I've got my first EV go kart, ladies and gentlemen. So I can go to the uh, the grocery store down the street over at Whole Foods, and uh, if I have an issue this time. I can go to the EV Go charging place and get me some juice. There's only 38 so cents in the card. It's kind of like a credit card. Yeah, yeah. That little that little thing Bar right code, there. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the chargers nowadays, you don't even need that. You just wave your phone in front of it. It knows who you are. It knows what. Well, I'm old charge. school. Okay. Yeah. You, you're no, have not to you. Pull me along. <laughs> Don Don still has oh. a bag phone. <laughs> 
with the big battery on the side of it. I know what a bag phone is. <laughs> Keeps it in his belly bag. It's an old bag phone. It's an old bag, an old dried up old man phone is what you're talking about. All right. So a great display, lots of vehicle. Can you sit in those things? Absolutely. Well, the Porsche, they made us lock up, but the rest of them are, are open, open where you can oh, get geez. inside of them. Well, cool. I think what? that's a great idea because a lot of people that haven't seen them, like over my part of the world, there's not very many over there. Mm-hmm. I saw a Tesla the other day and I almost went off the road. And <laughs> it, But, you know, people need to come and sit down in them and realize, you know, this is a vehicle. It's, just a regular the, car. Yeah, it's the power it's just train. just the propulsion different. system's different. That's, that's the most important thing. Uh, the last thing I would say to my customers as they were leaving the lot in their new EV is say, look, it's just a car. That's, you know, people think that they've got to know all this kilowatt hour stuff. It's just a car. It Buzz, just uses let me, different let fuel. Me, let me ask you something. So what has changed? I, I read a story somewhere here, not uh, in the, just a few weeks ago, actually, that this infrastructure issue, then it has been an issue. Uh, is uh, about to change because now the government is, is stepping up and, and they're going to help companies to set up infrastructure for electrics. And that's been my biggest challenge, as you know. Yeah. And uh, you actually ran into that on your round circle trip that you that you had. Had to make a detour to make sure that you had enough juice to get no, back he, where he you No, he just had to, to plan his route correctly. Oh, well, I know. Yeah. And, but uh, we're trying to... Forget having to plan routes and charging stations where you get slow. Okay, well, there's a charging station there, kind of like the 7-Eleven on the every corner mm-hmm. around, that around town. It's probably not well, too far away. There's two points to that. The first is, yes, absolutely, the government and the new infrastructure plan, if that gets adopted, is going to roll out 500,000 DC fast chargers here in the United States. Now, to give you the amount of scale we're talking about today, there's between 75,000 and 100,000 of them. General Motors just across signed the a, United States. Across right. the United States, General Motors just signed a deal with EVgo. Same goal. They're going to put out 500,000 uh, fast chargers. Um, Shell worldwide in the next four years is going to put out 400,000 DC fast chargers. So, but the thing that people have to realize is this is not. It doesn't have to be on every street corner like a gas station anymore because 99 percent of the time. Your gas station is in your own garage. You're right. going to plug it into a 110 outlet or a 220 outlet. 220. Not necessarily. Oh, you know, you know now you fast charge. Hold on. Oh, 80% on. of Americans drive less than 40 miles a day. Why go buy a $500 charger if the 110 will do it for free? I mean, really? Yeah, that hasn't been my experience well, either. I don't really know about Don. free. But but let me, let me ask you this. So, so I get my EV and I go home and I can plug it into my 110 or I can buy the charger. Now, I'm out on the road. I mean, how am I going to know where there's a charger that I can plug in? The car will tell you. You've got to you've got to have another person that's sitting there with some binoculars. No, no, no. There are apps <laughs> for the phone, and a lot of the apps like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto now will locate the charger and show you on the display. I'm just going to say every car that I've had that's been electric shows on the display that there. If you press press the right button, you know where's the next charging station. Okay, but but not all the charging cords are the same, is my understanding. A lot, or almost all DC fast chargers now are equipped for both the Asian standard Chatamo and the U.S. standard CCS. Tesla is a separate animal, and there are adapters you can use to use a level 2 Tesla charger, but the, the DC fast Tesla charger can only be used by Teslas. So there is some differentiation there. Now, there are apps like PlugShare that you can say, okay, I'm not driving a Tesla, so filter out the Tesla chargers. They don't show okay. up on the map. Okay. They're not distracted so, at so all. So they can, yeah, okay. That's Because that's what I was wondering because I knew that Tesla was different than everybody else, but is there that much variance? But apparently there's. And this reminds you of the old beta care. VHS days. We've had but, that discussion at 12 yes. o'clock. <laughs> that's coming to <laughs> yeah. an end. Um, in, in Asia, they're starting to add CCS ports to the Asian cars, so the American standard's going to end up being dominant. And I've heard a rumor that Tesla is about to start adding CCS ports on their European models. So if that happens, it's only a matter of time before everything is using CCS. Standardized, yeah. And it's, you know, we're all, we're all watching DVDs Particularly or if the big Blu-rays infra- instead yeah, of Yeah, if the infrastructure says the majority, these, there's 10 million ports out here you can use if you use this, but if you use the other one, there's only 75,000. Yeah. You know, you know, it's going to make more sense. Yeah, and, and exactly what you're talking about there, you know, you're asking about, well, how do they come up with 20, 30, and 30% all that? 
I think all of these things, like GM saying we're going to be 100% electric by 2035, or Ford saying in Europe we'll be 100% electric by 20, I think it's 25, the market's going to decide this. And it's going to happen a lot faster, I think, than the OEMs are predicting, especially now that the trucks are coming out. The people that were most vehemently against EVs were the pickup truck drivers, and it's one, they were being left out of the game, and two, they just didn't believe that it could be performance like this. Right. Well, it's about to be proven yeah. to them. And when that happens, the tipping point happens, and everybody's going to have an EV. It's going to well, happen the, really quick. Well, well the there's RVs that are sitting right over there on the other end of the building. You know, if you've got a truck that you can go over there and you can hook up to your travel trailer and you can go up to the lake two hours away, three hours away or whatever, then you're right. That's what's going to make a difference. And turn yeah. the generator on in your RV and plug your truck <laughs> in while you're driving. I was wondering about that. Oh. I mean, you're almost talking perpetual motion by the time you've got it. You're self-charging you as still you're going need down gas. the road. You still need to stop yeah, no more. Gas no, no, no. Can the battery, the inverter off the battery, charge, run it off of that, plug it into the 110, then run it oh, down? God. No. <laughs> but Hank Hill's going to be really upset because nobody's going to need propane well, that's for their true. trips oh, anymore. Anyway. Hank, Hank will be that's out of a job again. Yeah. Shocking statement. All I can think of is strapping that Honda generator to the top of my EV. So when it runs out of juice, I just go up there and give it a couple of years. Don, we are going on a road trip. <laughs> <the enemy time. laughs> I, I'm gonna I want you to take you. them on one. I'm Please. Telling you. Yeah. Y'all we, should, y'all Fairfield, should. Texas. There's a Sam's. It's a great uh, buffet restaurant there. We'll meet there. I've and then I'm Sam's hot you. dogs. I mean, you can't beat them. Y'all exactly. should have done that drive to Las Vegas, four of you in an EV, and then given the EV to a needy family. Yes. Actually, yeah, you want to come up. rally. Yeah. The we know rally. that drive we're going to do from Denver, Colorado, to Olympia and Washington and back. You ought to come and meet us for part of that drive because we will charge twice a day. Once while we're driving, you know, we'll stop for a meal and charge the car. And the second time we'll be at the hotel where we sleep that night. So it'll be like driving a gas car because the charging will happen while we eat. And then the other charging will happen while we sleep. It does won't this, really delay Does this mean that I'm going to have to take off work to do this? This is work. This is tax deductible for you. No, Come no, on now. no, no. I mean, I have a real job, too. <laughs> well, you so. could do it as a news story. Hey, we'll contact Channel 13 and you can do it as a news story. You could become a uh, the... Electric anchor man. Here, well, let, let me go ahead and just answer for them right now. Not <laughs> interested. Uh, I just answered for them. get you a them. jacket like Buzz has got? Yeah. yeah. And Channel 11 shine. actually had me on for an Earth Day piece they did that was going to be about renewable energy, electric vehicles, and all that. Believe it or not, after they met me, it was all about electric vehicles. And I had people call them no, up. No, I saw you on TV today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, what but size Seriously, here? let's do a road trip, bud. Well, you know. Is there? It, it, <laughs> I tell you, I, I tell you what. Uh, when when I retire from my job, which hopefully will be Ten years. twenty thirty five or something like that, when everything's electric, I'll let you know. Yeah, and I'll let you know how my uh, EV goes when I get the uh, Ford uh, Mustang. I was going to say when you get the electric helicopter. No, you know, I, won't, have a, have I won't be riding helicopter. in that. Well, we'll have a chase helicopter when he does the ride. GM's yeah, doing a, a two-person drone. I mean, they're going to have Good now that them. we've now that we've automated driving in two dimensions. The next step is three dimensions, and they're going to make drones that you sit in and you just know, fly I've you made without it you all these it. years without death yet. <laughs> and I'm not. I don't think I'm going to put myself in the air. Not I'll let somebody, the chopper. <laughs> somebody else do all of that. But thank you for now, asking. Now at this time, Don, uh, it's really not going to make that much a difference in your longevity. <laughs> so you might as well go ahead and try. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> and he thinks he's coming on the show again. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you're done. <laughs> what, what size is that jacket you're wearing? It might fit him. <laughs> yeah. You know, we have had more. We could, la- we could actually try that. We have had more laughs with Buzz and the EV yes, thing. Yeah. That I think that anything, and you know, we're just kidding around, but but it is fun. To talk but he's about. educating us on EVs. Well, as absolutely. Well. I, uh, there's no doubt about that. Some it's, people just can't be taught anything. <laughs> <laughs> Dragging me along. We'll have a test next week. Yeah, no, there won't be. But thank you for asking. So, um, do each of the vehicles that you have, the EVs that you have down there, do they show uh, things like mileage and how often you have to recharge them? Yeah, that's actually on the window sticker of all the cars, and a lot of a lot of customers are confused by the EPA area because EPA area of the bumpers or the window sticker because it looks so different. 
but they have a bar graph that's even on the gas cars that show you where it fits in yep. the right. pollution yeah. level. Mm -hmm. If you look at the far right of that, at the bottom of that bar, it shows you how far it'll go on a chart. So it's right there. And in the upper left corner of that bar, it has a thing called MPGE, yep. mile per gallon equivalent. So you get a rough idea of what that kind Jeep of fuel right economy. That Jeep right here's got that. Yeah. yeah. That'll give you an idea of what the economy is going to be like. Now, the, the MPGE is just a calculation based on energy and gasoline versus energy and electricity, which is not really accurate. You actually do much better in an electric vehicle. And so I do a calculation based on the price of gas versus the price of electricity, because that's what people care about. And uh, I actually have a, a small spreadsheet that you can load on your smartphone, plug in the cost of electricity. Buzz, you know I love gas you, but I am you. not going to download your <laughs> spreadsheet. I appreciate the offer, though. It's only three dollars a copy. <laughs> yeah. I'll actually, I'll, I'll fund half of yours. It'll be a buck fifty. Perfect. <laughs> at at evangelist.com. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, so it's on the cars. I, yeah. Is there is there a, a, a large spread between the seven vehicles that you got down there? They didn't give us a window sticker for the Porsche, so that one I can't really okay. talk about. But Six, the acceleration yeah. it's got, I'm sure yeah. it's at the lower end. All of them nowadays are, are usually between about 219 miles of range to 260 miles of range. Um, all of them are about, except for the really heavy ones, you're looking at somewhere between 80 mile per gallon equivalent and 120 mile per gallon equivalent. So they're, they, nowadays, everything's going to have over 200 miles of range. In it, the case of the top-of-line Mustang, 400 miles of range. And it, they, they keep saying that, you know, the Tesla now is uh, up to 300 miles if you get the big battery in it. Am I correct? I think they're actually getting closer to 400, 400. now. Yeah. But uh, does, is that true? Do you know that for a fact? I mean, does, that, does they say that on the sticker? Well, your results may vary. No, I know <laughs> that. But, well, and it depends on weather and and. Once you get used to driving Whether or not you got a heavy foot. Oh, yeah, that too. But like coldest days of winter, if you're using a space heater, that's going to be a pretty big impact, up to 20%. But what you do is while the car is still plugged into the wall, you start at 10 minutes before you're going to leave, so it uses the wall electricity to preheat the car. And then once you get in the car, you turn the thermostat down a little bit and you use the seat heaters and the heated steering wheel to keep you comfortable. And that uses one-tenth of the energy of that space heater. So there's all kinds of things that you can do once you're used to driving an electric learn vehicle. learn that environment. Yeah, to squeeze a little bit extra out. It's kind of like driving an old Volkswagen Bug that didn't really have a heater in it. And you were heating <laughs> the interior from the exhaust system. And you that had to plan ahead. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I had a Volkswagen and I put a sterno can. In it. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> so um, I know Tesla, I was just reading an article about Tesla's about to release their new Roadster or is presenting their new Roadster. You're talking about 560 miles on, on full charge. And it is one of the most beautiful cars I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I think it, it's going to list for $190,000, if okay. I remember correctly. <laughs> the, when you play at that level, if you have well, to ask how much, you're yeah. in the, you need to go somewhere else. Yep, you're right. But that, that is going to be a supercar. I mean, there's really no other way to describe it because 0 to 60 on that is now well below three seconds. Right. I think they're getting close to 2.1 or something like that. Uh, I actually think they were talking about breaking into the 1.9. Holy cow. You know, is that insane? Why? Because you, like you, you can. <laughs> okay. There's a goal. Everything's well, got a goal. You were, know, you, were you a hot rodder at one point in your life at all? Or were you always an EV? Did you grow up with no, a golf cart? I had a 67 Camaro Rally Sport. I thought I was a hot rodding guy back you then. You were. Okay. That was high school. But uh, after that, I got married at the age of 20, and so it was family cars. And yeah. I did have a Triumph TR6, but those weren't really hot rods no. at all. They were just fun. Yeah. They just leaked. You know, did they Every, ever. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Didn't have to change the oil, just kept pouring fresh in the top. I had to leave it at the side of the road one night right here in Houston during a typical Houston rainstorm, and vandals tried to burn it. They wadded up newspaper behind the seats. <laughs> it leaked rain and wine water into the car, <laughs> and they couldn't <laughs> burn my car. So, yeah, you're right. Triumphs, uh, they definitely leaked. So uh, where do we find you here in the NRG Center? Where are you? When down you there? come in the main entrance, I'm going to be at the very back wall on the left-hand side. About uh, nobody a, puts baby in the corner. Oh, he's not. In oh, the we're corner. right next to the Aston Martins. And am I dressed right? Yes, you are. Yes, Aston you Martin? are. Right. I wish I had a martini glass to walk over and tell him shake and not spurt or Smith, Buzz Smith. And I'd <laughs> love to do that. <laughs> they put me in a corner. Yeah, well, there's a reason. We always for that. put you in a corner. <laughs> yeah, always. 
Well, Buzz, it's good to see you. And, Always. Uh, we, we, Same we, here, guys. We, we appreciate you stopping by and talking to us, and we appreciate your patience with our ribbing and teasing <laughs> and all of that. You but guys are a hoot. I mean, I love sport. coming down and sparring with I you. I know you're you a good do. Sport. And it is evangelist. Ev and yeah, he always has a hard time. But yeah, evangelist.com. And if you want to support our cross country road trip, we're hoping to get a pickup truck for this, but it's uh, evroadtripmovie.com. And uh, we're going to sell a bunch of t shirts to try to get the production costs down and all, but we're going to make a feature length documentary about this trip. And my message is you know, I want to meet people that work in the oil and gas industry that are concerned about what's happening because I lost everything in the 85 crash. I know what that's like. But the fact of the matter is, the, the industry is going to move from where it is today to a different area. Those jobs are going to shift. If you can build a pipeline, you can build bridges, you can build roads. If you um, are climbing up high on a rig to work on it, you can install a wind turbine. So what I want people to do is not go through the pain I went through, realize this change is coming. You can't stop it. I mean, it's, it's just going to happen. Right. But get ready for it. You know, be smart about it. There's a, a great article in this month's Texas Monthly, a company that made offshore rigs that would go out, you know, drop down to the ocean floor and drill for oil. They now make them where they go out, drop down to the floor, and they drill down into the bedrock to put in foundations for offshore wind turbines. So the energy companies realize they're still going to make money. They're just going to make it a different way, and the people working in that industry near to, need to hear that message too. Buzz, thanks again. You bet, We appreciate guys. it, and we'll talk to you soon. I hope yeah, you will, no <laughs> doubt about it. Now, I want to get a couple of more news Thanks. stories in before we uh, finish up uh, our show from the Houston Auto Show today. Uh, as, as mentioned, the fully loaded 2022 GMC Hummer Edition 1 pickup will weigh 9,046 pounds or 4.5 tons, more than twice as much as a base-level GMC Sierra full-size pickup. The electric Hummer will be more than 900 pounds heavier than the original Hummer H1 and more than 2,000 pounds heavier than the 2021 Sierra 2500 or 3500 4x4 with a standard bed. The pickup will launch this fall with a low volume edition one trim starting at $112,595 including shipping. And Kia Motors has issued a new fix for the more than 440,000 vehicles recalled last year because of the possibility of leaking brake fluid that can lead to thermal events while parked or driving. Ouch. The affected vehicles in the U.S., uh, 283,803.1 Kia Optima sedans from the 2013 through 15 model and 156,567 Kia Sorento crossovers from the 14 and 15 model years. Did you hear that a Dutch court has ordered ordered former Nissan boss uh, Carlos Goshen to repay his salary to Nissan? <laughs> Good luck. Good luck on that. We yeah. always bring him up for some reason. Well, it, uh, it's, it's a fun story. It's a story that keeps giving. Yeah, 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 the, yeah exactly. What are you focused on, Dan? <laughs> Anything else here? <laughs> yeah. He's looking at some. Uh, Hyundai Motor Group has lately had a lot to say about its ambitions in electric vehicles and advanced transportation technologies. Last week, it vowed to put its money where its mouth is. South Korean automaker said it will invest $7.4 billion in the U.S. by 2025 to produce a suite of electric vehicles, upgrade factories, and develop smart mobility technologies. Hyundai's launching a global battery electric brand that uses the Ioniq name from its current hybrid and EV hatchbacks. You can shake we're on gonna, that. we got to take a quick break, and we'll be wrapping up today's show from the Houston Auto Show right after this. Whether you own a newer car or want to keep your older one humming along for a while longer, think of Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Bayway Chevy, and Bayway Lincoln to keep things in tip-top shape. From oil changes to major repairs, you can depend on the highly skilled service pros at Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Bayway Chevrolet, and Bayway Lincoln to perform fast, efficient service to keep your investment running strong. For all your service needs, remember Bayway. Schedule your next appointment online anytime. 
Bayway, keeping it original. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise in, and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, June 19th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free, and everyone is invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods. Cars from all over South Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard just south of I-10 in Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Loopy founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in, Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, June 19th, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy. The In Wheel Time Car Show will be there too. Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday morning, June 19th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy. Inside the Loop, visit Tailpipes and Tacos on the Southwest Freeway at Shepherd, weather permitting. NHRA Camping World Drag Racing. It's an 11,000 horsepower Nitro Rodeo coming to Houston Raceway Park in Baytown. Catch all the Nitro and Pro Stock action at the Mopar Express Lane. NHRA Spring Nationals presented by Pennzoil this weekend. Matt Hagen, Leah Pruitt, Erica Enders, three-time world champ Steve Torrance, and 16-time himself John Force. Kids 12 and under are free in general admission. Get tickets at HoustonRaceway.com. Houston's got horsepower. Don't miss the first ever Houston Summer Auto Show. May 19th through the 23rd at NRG Center. A limited edition collection of your favorite brands and models, including the new Ford Bronco and Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Tickets online only at HoustonAutoShow.com. <laughs> it's always good to be right on top of things, don't you think? Well, that's it for the In Wheel Time Car Show Extra Edition from the Houston Summer Auto Show. And we want to thank you for joining us. Right. Hey, when you're on Facebook, please give us a like. Tell your friends about us. Share our junk. You'll get Conrad's Unicorn Hunting Features, along with all things automotive all week long. The In Wheel Time Car Show streams on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and on InWheelTime.com. Podcasts are available at your favorite podcast outlet. Special thanks to all of our guests today, and especially to our Houston Auto Exec, Rochelle Salinas, for Absolutely. all of her assistance and expertise with the Houston Auto Dealers Association. The In Wheel Time Chief Engineer is the fabulous David mm. Ainsley. Our Marketing Manager and Video Technical Director is Jeffrey Zekin. Woo. For Booking Agent and Podcast Man, Mike, out of this world, Mars, and his royalty, King Conrad DeLong. I'm Don Armstrong. Be sure and join us live tomorrow morning for an expanded show, 8 to noon. What? When we'll be broadcasting from the NHRA Spring Nationals at Houston Raceway Park in Baytown, right here on the Smoke and Mirrors Network. Today's show was produced by Wainwright and Salinas Productions. So long for now, and we'll see you tomorrow live from NHRA Spring Nationals at Houston Raceway Park in Baytown, Texas, 8 to noon. Take care of yourself. <laughs>